Yes, we're going live. We're going live in 11 minutes and 41 seconds. Yep, yep, hold on, I got it. Yeah, 11 minutes, 11 minutes, yep, yep, thank you. Thank you very much, yep. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, once again, it is 6.48 p.m. Central Time here at the Hotel Orlov. And once again, we come to you live in color with zero viewers. From WWTD-TV, Channel 47, in Rural Retreat, Virginia, scenic, historic Rural Retreat, Virginia. The home of Dr. Pepper is buried about two miles from here. It's Dr. Pepper, the Civil War surgeon, uh, one of his employees in his drugstore stole the formula to drink and has uh, and took it to Texas and that he claimed it was his, but he named it after Dr. Pepper. At least he gave him credit, although he never really established that he was a real man. But he is a real man. He's buried right, right over there, man. We had two people watching, now we have one. It's a special historic Thursday night show. I'm gonna start doing Thursday night live shows here uh, on this uh, historic network, the Kratu Orloff Inspirational Network. And uh, my birthday is in two days and uh, on Saturday. And it's, uh, let me show you something amazing about that, about my birthday. Backwards as it is forwards. 42024. If you uh, reverse it, it's the same thing, man. Incredible. Well, we're having a big uh, dum dum meeting tonight. And uh, we're going to start a ceremonial fire here and we're going to dance around like gorillas while we talk about the pop culture of the 20th century. Yes, there will be people showing comic books, but our dum dum meeting is far more than just that. We will be showing toys, possibly. Possibly we'll be showing uh, old telephones, magazines, monster collectibles. Basically, uh, this, this network is devoted to everything that parents and teachers threw away when you were a child or when you went off to war or whatever. All of that is what's celebrated here, kids' culture, rock and roll culture of the 20th century. And, uh, let's see what the uh, people in the chat are saying here. First of all, this is the link to come on. We've got some people that have promised to come on, people that have never been on before. And I've been talking to people that uh, can't come on tonight, but maybe can come on soon, that are amazing people. My wife says, "Arg, I have to log back into work. Have fun, guys. She's just upstairs, you know, right right above me. But she's working by, by phone at home, man. A couple days a week. Gotham City Comics. Gotham City Comics is an historic comic book store and monster collectible store. It's one of the oldest comic book stores in the United States, opened in 1842. Run by Kevin Johnson. Um, yep. So, uh, Moon Dust. What is he saying? Hi, I am stoned. Well, I hope it didn't hurt too much. Uh, some of those rocks can hurt. 420. Oh, yeah, those hippies co opted my birthday. I prefer to not acknowledge that. I palindrome I. 
says Meyer Greenblatt, the historic comic book uh, expert and uh, toy collector from San Francisco. We're all historic here. We're all ancient geriatric fossils um, ready for hospice care. And uh, tonight, all our dementia will be on display here. This is filth, ladies and gentlemen, but I, I, I said to my wife, I, this is probably as hard to kick as cigarettes. And of course, she's kicked cigarettes. She says, no, cigarettes are harder. I don't know. This seems pretty hard to kick, man. As I, it's, trust me. Okay, so seven human beings watching. We're not even supposed to be on yet. We're really violating the rules because we're not supposed to start till seven. And uh, so people probably aren't, aren't here yet, man. So uh, um, tonight, it looks like Dr. Fives will be appearing. Charlton 66 may come along in a couple hours because this live stream may go till it's right now 6.54 p.m. here central time in uh, rural retreat, Virginia. Uh, we're going to possibly be going to 11 or even later. Um, you don't have to stay on that long if you pop on. Links in the chat, ladies and gentlemen. Kevin Johnson of Gotham City Comics might be dropping in to show what's new at his store and... Uh, Meyer Greenblatt, I think he'll be showing up. Who else promised? Oh, our, uh, our friends from back where we used to live, uh, we called them the clowns. Uh, they should be coming on. Uh, so we'll, uh, we'll meet them soon. And uh, let me see. Who was that? Uh, I've been talking to some people. Uh, mate, I'm trying. I'm trying to get this guy that I've never met that lives not too far from me to come on and maybe he'll be a special surprise. I don't know if you guys would come on. That'd be great. In the meantime, I'll, I'll, I'll kill, uh, kill some time. Oh, a new antique store just opened near me. Um, there's an antique store that I'm not interested in. That's downtown, but this one, is uh, it amazing? It's it's an old church. It's been converted into it. It was for sale. I guess they were hoping people would buy it to live in it like a house. But it's been turned into an antique store, and the antiques are pretty good in there. I went in there and spent six dollars because it's my birthday, and I we don't have any money. But um, I thought I'll. Oh, I'll show you what I bought. There we go. I haven't even looked at this stuff yet. Honestly, I just got it. Um, oh. I'm trying to, I was trying to give Eric Breen the, the link in. He's like the only social media that Eric Breen has is Twitter or, or X. And so he needs the link to be given to him in Twitter. So if someone could copy this link and go to Twitter and give it to Eric Brain, maybe I'll get him to come on. I don't know. Am I going on against the geeky puppets? It's possible. I don't know what people are doing on Thursday night. I don't know. There's Paulo Costa. You need, he could come on, man. That would be cool. He's all the way from Portugal. Indeed. Okay, so I uh, spent four dollars on this teen dom, teen teen time stand up dolls with their clothes. So, is it a highly sought after collectible? Possibly not, but uh, it's uh, like paper dolls, right? So, you uh, let's see what we can do here. <laughs> um, so you can put different outfits on them. It's a very, a very cool thing. I don't know. I thought it was cool. Ooh, I thought that was a Lily Munster dress for a minute, but it isn't. 
But it might as well be because, uh, oh, here's a very Jackie Kennedy looking, uh, looking thing. Okay, so here's the other girls. There's three and the other. Ooh, this one's got some tape. Uh, perhaps that's her way of, oh, the tape comes right off. Of course it does. Um, yeesh. Okay, that's why you get it for $4, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Okay, fantastic. Well, that's uh, incredible. Um, teen time. And I found a copy of Dynamite that I didn't own for $2. So I have a big collection of Dynamite, the magazine from Scholastic that those of you that grew up in the 70s know about. This is not in the best of shape. Oof, oh, those teeth are horrifying. Look at Eric Estrada's teeth, man. That is really disturbing. You've never seen them that close before. Daniel, maybe I don't see them again anymore. It's horrible. Eric Estrada, of course, of the famous television show Chips and uh, Yeah, yeah, this book has not been treated that well, but uh, that's all right. Uh, how often do you see a copy of Dynamite for sale? I, I don't see it very often. <sighs> so look at that, social insecurity. Um, remember Count Morbido? I remember waiting for these books to show up and the teacher to open up that box and get your order. Um, Ten things you might not know about the Bee Gees. It says there are new comments. Uh, Graphic Man says, be there in a bit. Fireball says, hello, everyone. Fireball. Oh, yeah. Oh, this is uh, <laughs> um, in the early days of Dynamite, they would have origin stories of Marvel superheroes. And I think they did DC heroes, too. And then they decided, why, why license for Marvel? We'll just come up with our own. We'll come up with the Dynamite duo. And they... Uh, they made their own comic strip that kind of looks like a Marvel comic. That's right. Oh no, this is, what? It can't possibly be. Oh, what year is this from? 79. Yeah, I remember they put out like two or three Dracula movies, like right in the right in the same time period. There was this Love at First Bite, and then there was the Frank Langella Dracula. Maybe it was just two. Uh, oh, yeah, no, there was a Nosferatu remake with Klaus Kinski, so technically that's a Dracula movie. I remember that. Um, but what I was saying, like, uh, where did I see that? Uh, why are they doing this? Oh, okay. I was thinking this is too early for that Mrs. Doubtfire movie. But it's like, you know, this woman is clearly it's Robin Williams. But yeah, and that's not how we looked in Mrs. Doubtfire. Apparently, it was an Andy Kaufman stunt. Andy Kaufman, uh, I was just reading, was at Carnegie Hall. And uh, 
he got his friend Robin Williams to dress up like his grandmother. So I guess that was part of the bit. Um, little, little bits about 1970s um, history that you never knew and never wanted to know. Okay. Yeah. Oh my God. He's just like a, it's almost Donny Osmond like the tea. Um, yes. Well, so I have an issue of dynamite number number. What does that say? I can't read it, man. Is that fifty four sixty? Who cares? It's long. Mm -hmm. Don't have. Here's Meyer Greenblatt here uh, showing up in the. Uh... Hello, Meyer. Hey, what's going on? Not much. Not much. Um. Trying to see what else I've got here. Oh shit! Oh, I got a. You know, we get. It's great. We get all these cards and letters from people out in television land, and I got from John Doris, the noted animator, a little envelope today. The side was slit open a little bit, but I think it was more just because it got mangled. It didn't get mangled, but it's like if if it, if all the contents of this envelope had slid out, there's no who knows what they would have thought. Yes, it's uh, more of um, the insanity from John Gorris and some great, it's just everything he could stuff in an envelope. Um, let me get myself full, all oh, graphic man's here, but let me get myself full screen. And uh, so this is the first thing I see when I open the envelope, be the change. And it's just, you just see the madness on the back that has been put together from who knows what. And then, then there's this. Look at my handshake. You see, I'm, I'm very nice. You're a little collapse here. Um, just look like a stick little box, right? Is that what that was? Um, it could be a sick box. Yes, <laughs> it's very possible. Perhaps he'll come on. I think he, I told him about this stream and maybe he can explain this artwork. I guess that's Moloch worship. Man, look at my hand shaking. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I just pictured him doing this all day, man. He's not animating. And then... Oh, this is a Return of the Jedi bubblegum card he's thrown in above the Sarlacc pit. Very nice. The bounty hunter Boosh is actually answer on next card. Um, now this segment of Return of the Jedi with these floating ships and everything is, is right out of Edgar Rice Burroughs. That is... Uh, and this is pure John Carter. Um, Eric Green's here. Cool, man. Uh, Hello. Hey, hey, Eric. Hello. Wow, man. Everybody's got beards now. Yeah. Yeah, let me, let me finish showing off. Oh, there's someone else down there hiding down below. Who could that be? Why, well, it's Kevin from Gotham City Comics. Now, I may be, <laughs> I may run out of spots, but... Um, uh, there's a wealthy uh, benefactor, uh, <coughs> George Soros, that is sending me a check, and it should get here soon. And then I'm going to get the upgraded, uh, uh, whatever, StreamYard, where I can have a million people on at once. Mm -hmm. Okay, it looks like um, <laughs> it looks like uh, he's wanting to show us that he got in this Betty Page comics. With <laughs> there was nothing politically incorrect about. Or what is what? That's not the comic. What? Is, oh, it's framed. Okay. Yeah, I I don't know how he got away with that back in the eighties, but I bought that off the stand. Oh, Doctor Fives is here. Man, everybody's showing up. Page comic. This is this the as most as I can get on the cheap plan. Yeah, and if you need me to step out, I can. Oh, no, no, no. Well, you just got here. You haven't even said one word. Um. Holy smoke. Okay. Let's wow. Your lighting's great, man. If you could come here for a week 
and help me light my house and check it to see if it's fireproof. Because I've got all these, it's like the previous owners were really worried because there's fire extinguishers everywhere, which makes me think that they know something that I don't. And then in the attic, they've got this box that the ladder, like, like I could ever roll that ladder out to an escape. So I, I think there's something horrible going on here. Uh, I say that because that's his been his job for decades. Is, okay, let's see what's going on over at Gotham. He seems to really want to show us his collectible here. How do I make him go cool. full screen? Let's see. All right, Gotham. What do you got there? Certificate of Authenticity. You've acquired, oh, from the estate of Dave. Oh, this came after he passed away. Oh, what a shame. Jennifer, is that his sister? Because he wasn't married, was he? I don't know if your mic's on. <laughs> Rocket 88. I'm not, sure. I'm not sure if he was married. We hear you now. Yeah, we're hearing you. Um, okay. Justin said, message Breen the link. And then Eric Breen said, thanks. And then Justin said, smile. And then Paulo Costa says, uh, praise George Soros. Trust the science. Yes. Uh, <laughs> and uh, Kevin, are you morphing into Jambo, says Paulo. Why? Because we all like Jungle Girls. It's just that he, the, <laughs> because he's an air conditioner repairman, he can afford to buy all the jungle <laughs> comics. We all love them it's equally. We're just not air conditioner repairmen. But um, that's great. That's great. Um, apparently, all the um, all the youngsters are getting into Dave Stevens now, Matt Baker, and uh, Pulp. And what else? Are, what else is cool right now for the investors? Um, I forget what the other thing is. Yeah, I, I bought all these. I had the common sense. I didn't buy Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, but I was buying up any day Stevens I saw when these were on the stands. I mean, it was just obvious to me that this was next level stuff. Okay, I got to show more of John Goris's. Uh, um, <laughs> Is A-OK -okay here? Oh, yeah, man, that's great. Okay. Um, this is really good. Look at this little mini painting. <laughs> I don't know if you guys have watched his animation, uh, his ghost tank animation. Look at that. Look at the paint, the lighting effects he gets back there. And this is, uh, this is tiny. This is, you know, this, see, this is tiny compared to my head. And then... I think that he is um, John Goris. Have you all seen um, Harold and Maude? Yes. I, I kind of think that's what he is because he's always sending me these things that come from people's funerals. <laughs> he just goes to funerals to get these little freebies, man. It's like free comic book day. He goes to the free funeral day. <laughs> That's um, still better than being attracted to Ruth Gordon. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, well, that was a problem, too. Uh, okay, so <laughs> this must have come from a model kit, like a little advertisement included in an, an MPC model kit. So what he does is he empties <laughs> – he doesn't like clutter. He Sometimes he says, you know, he gets bothered seeing the backgrounds of my videos. He likes – so I think he has all this, and I always said, yes, let me be your trash can. Send me all your trash, and I'll love it. So, Because <laughs> I'll put these all in special files. You know, I'll put his artwork in a special file, and, you know, sometimes I'll put it on the wall. But this is something I would save. It's little, uh, little awards, I guess, you can get for building your models. And, um. I think this is neat. What is it? How many tokens you can get for building a Stegosaurus? That's pretty neat. Okay. Now, <laughs> then he sends me this. Not required to file off your information only. So I, okay. I don't, <laughs> but look at this, man. How did he do this? This is, this is really great. Imagine, 
this is really great. I mean, don't you agree? Look at the coloring of this. There's nobody in the comic industry doing this now. To me, this is almost EC quality. I, you probably think I'm insane. No one, notice no one's saying anything. They all think I'm insane. I think it's great. And then he sends this. I love it. Because um, my birthday is on April 20th. <laughs> and it's just a calendar he's torn out. It's just like he just sent all this from his cell. Um, anyway, um, so that's the, um, A-OK -okay birthday. Oh, no, there's one other thing. <laughs> Is this okay to show on uh, family program? It's on this, you, you can tell he's done this on a vintage sketchbook, uh, paper. It's like, I've got something like that over here. I just discovered this. And when you... When you find something like this in an estate sale, you know, stuff like this, <laughs> and then you draw on it, it looks like a vintage drawing. Because, look, it's all this aged, lined yeah. paper. And so you draw on this, and you can convince people, yes, this is a sketch done by Neil Adams in 1970. And they say, yeah, well, the paper, forensically, it looks like a match for that year. But anyway, this is a – says – Okay, birthday boy, time you learn to crawl again. <laughs> so, so this is what I received for my birthday today. So, uh, so that's great. That's great. Yeah. So, um, can you guys hear me okay? I'm yeah, having I hear activity you. issues. I keep going in and out. Um, yeah, I hear you. Is, is this the free mad for a comic book day? Yeah, that's what this is. So, is it is it magazine size or comic size? Comic. Hmm. And isn't the EC reprint of Mad Number no. One coming out in a couple months? Or? Yeah, I think you told me about that. Did, did you order it? I usually my orders are like three weeks before they go on sale. Oh, okay. Oh, all right. You guys always know about it before I do. Yeah, if, if you could throw one of those in my pile too, I would. That would be great. He, he just got a. What is it? When does it come out? That showcase for Green Lantern is that next week? Is that a uh, Mike Allred cover? Yeah, that's number two. That you got number one already. Oh, okay. And they're drawing it. Oh, yo, yeah, okay. And that's for next week. That's going on sale Tuesday. Yeah. Yeah. Give me that one too. <laughs> what? What is that? I should probably read it to see how bad DC is going to be coming up here. Well, Eric Green, what do you know about that? Be right back. What absolute power? Yeah, I've never heard of that. It's it's going to be their summer event that's going to lead to their version of uh, uh, the ultimate their ultimate universe. It's DC though, so I have little to no faith. And I saw no. Amanda Waller on the cover, and they're trying to make her. No, this isn't for you. Everything, so I I don't think I don't have a lot of. What's the story of Amanda? Why is Amanda Waller like this big thing that they're going to make a TV series out of? And I don't know because they, they've they've turned her into a you know a one hundred percent bad guy. Okay. So, yeah, and she was never that before. She was always you know covert and you know one of the spirits or the Suicide Squad, but but there was but there were lines she wouldn't cross. Now I think she's just I don't know if they're gonna if if she's if the real Amanda Waller's being held somewhere. And honestly, I don't care enough at this point. I mean, I read two DC books every month. And, yeah, I have no real desire to see what else is going on because it's it, – DC's terrible right now. So, for most yeah. Of yeah, I don't know. Um, but they're doing good facsimiles of their old yeah. stuff. <laughs> yeah, and, and they're, they're doing a thing now called House of Brainiac that's actually good. But that's two titles out of however many they publish, and 
you know, Green Lantern's good, but there's not much else that is right now as far mm. as their regular line. And I hate to say that because we've got a retailer, you know, on the panel right now, but and I work at a comic shop, but they're just I, I gotta gotta you know, tell the truth. It's you know, I, saw, I saw like two or three videos today that 77 percent of comic store comic book stores had lower sales in 23 than they did in 22. And you know how that's being spun? Well, 23% of them are doing better. Wow. Probably oh, because they're probably because they're located next to the store that just went out of business and they picked up what little they had left. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, Paul is, is Amanda Waller was a great, well-rounded, tragic character, wasn't afraid of making tough choices. Now she's just a psychopath, manipulative, and devoid of a moral compass. <laughs> well-rounded. I see what you did there, Paulo. <laughs> Yeah, I don't, uh, I don't get it personally, but, so, uh, yeah, I've been digging through stuff and digging through, man, I can't believe the stuff I'm finding. I, I did notice on Free Comic Book Day, the zero issue of Flash Gordon's coming out, oh. and the, the guy writing that is a terrific writer. So that series, I, I'd say there's a 90, 98% chance that that's going to be worth reading. It, it looks like Strange Life's trying to get in, but but can't because I have six <laughs> slots. Um, but if you wait, you know, someone will get bored real quick. Well, I have a stream at nine, so I, I can... I can check out now if he wants to get in. Well, or if he wants to hang on a while. Yeah, this, why does it have to be like this? Is why they make you pay because it's like Sophie's choice. You know, which one do you <laughs> want? <to see? laughs> um, man, shit. Um, yeah, no. Um, uh, oh, he just disappeared. So he's he's made the choice moot. That that's what I asked him to hold this morning. Look, they they've made a Elvira look like a paperback for Dark Shadows. Uh, oh, it's really we, not that great a drawing, that. but I just thought, I, you know, I like those Dark Shadows paperbacks. I mean, it's I don't know, it's an okay drawing, but honestly, I could probably, if I tr really tried, I could probably draw better than that. <laughs> but uh, you know, I still would have gotten. Oh, is that? I still would have gotten that if I if our store had gotten it. Um, yeah, that, that was the last one. He says he's got people that buy every single cover of Elvira. Hey, what, what is that a new vampire? Oh, that must be my pile. <laughs> Does it all fit in one box? Yeah, it's is all that, contained. It's all that's fully a, contained now. Yeah, that is. Um, that's it's a not very a regular box. Choice. Either. It's Warren, a, uh, you, the PGC box, so it's bigger than a normal box. <laughs> Warren used that painting twice. I mean, <laughs> yes, if you use it, it's going to look like a Warren magazine, but maybe you could give another artist a chance. I don't know. Um, let's see. Paulus says, no, the modern-day comic writer is mostly devoid of active synapses. <laughs> Yeah, it's the Andy Warhol mask. So uh, I might be getting on Andy Halloween, who um, is is one half of the channel uh, Dark Ride Dracula. Uh, he, he and his girlfriend, I'm hoping, will come on. He can't come on tonight, but um, I contacted him last night and and uh, so we started watching, and, and then I suddenly had two subscriptions, so I figured that, hey, what is this new Godzilla X Kong? What is that? Is it any good? I didn't even know it existed. It's supposed to be really good. Okay. One of my customers saw it nine times already. What, is Godzilla, what does it mean, Godzilla X? What does X mean? Times. Times? So it's like a math problem? Or are they teaming up? It's, it's probably it's, like because uh, the other one was versus, and this one's maybe they're teaming up. I don't know. I haven't seen so, it. So what is this stupid thing that, that what's his face used on? It was bat. It was Superman v 
Batman v Superman. What what was is that what they use in divorce hearings? V dot. Why did he not use verses? Do you even know what V means? I'm sure Paulo does. He's that, that's that's the way kids say it now. Like, like I see that all the time on baseball. They'll say oh. so and so v so and so. Oh, so he's just trying to be hip. Yeah, I think so. Oh, that fucking yeah, hip. I think so too. I think it comes from video games. I think it probably comes from something like Super Smash Brothers, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that would explain why I didn't know that part. I've never played a video game. Yeah, so. Godzilla X Kong. It's okay. Well, it's better than <laughs> it's better than uh, what was playing last week, a week before um, Kung Fu Panda Four. You know, so I, I figure I'll go see it tomorrow. Uh, oh no, we got to see uh, what. Oh, hold on, I want to give you full. Go back to the first one. I want to see all these. <laughs> <laughs> These are all hand painted. That's brilliant. Wow. Those Those Boris cool. is brilliant. He's great. Wow, that's cool. Every one of these is a piece of original art that are just given away. I see. I could never run a store. I was telling this lady at the antique store I could never run an antique store because I'd want to keep everything. And she said, "I know what you mean." <laughs> well, those are great. Oh man, that first one with the bullet holes behind Batman. Uh, <laughs> I kind of would like to have that, but uh, let's see. Uh, Fireball Comics says. The Mute Girl storyline is the most interesting aspect. Some new and old monsters. Oh, really? There's more? Mo I guess flattery will get you everywhere, says John Gorris. Yeah, thank you, John, um, for that. Um, um, please try to come on at some point tonight. Um, and I'm hoping the check will get here from George Soros before Saturday so I can have a lot more people on my birthday stream. Instead of just like, Drew. I'm watching Drew because I, she's starting to eat paper and even plastic bags because she's trying to, she's got her stomach so stuff. I'm going to make sure she doesn't start eating some vintage uh, paper item in here. Uh, making me nervous. Drew, over here, man. How dare you. So, um, Okay, that's a comic convention Sunday morning. Is that correct? Yeah, I'll be there Sunday. Fraga. Fraga is a really good artist. I really like his stuff. I've never heard of him, but I trust you. Oh, Charlton's trying to get in. Oh, shit. <laughs> I wish we could if I can, can I can I switch people out Micah and, and but not get rid of them and then bring them back I think so is go there ahead, anyone who would be willing to go into the yeah go into, ahead and, uh, into the phantom zone so I could bring Charlton yeah. <laughs> sure sure go ahead and uh do that this is uh Dr. Five Star oh no he just went away <laughs> Everybody's feeling guilty when <laughs> Strange Life went away and now he went away. Okay, hey, well, let's... Possible, if, Gratu, if, if, uh, if you can get Charlton66 back on stream when I'm on stream, I just want to show him something and talk to him for a few minutes, and then I can step back out, and then somebody else can come <laughs> back in. I okay, yeah, I was going to like see, this, but you'll stick around in the... Yeah, yeah. Uh, on yeah. the screen. Absolutely. Oh, okay. All right, yeah, I'll come, come back. back. Yeah, yeah, go yeah, ahead. Yeah, come back, Charlton, and we'll see what what we can do. I want you should not take me here. out, and I'll stay huh? on. But you can go ahead and uh, bump me out and have Charlton come on. But I'll stay on. Oh, wait, just... wait, someone's coming on here. Yeah, so go oh, ahead. And okay, know. so that was okay. Five says, okay, remove that. Okay, so then I bring. Oh, that's Strange Life coming in. Okay. There's Strange Life, and then, okay, cool. What's up? You've been, uh, oh. did you, oh, I, 
Were you, yeah, were you saying that you think you got your apartment sold? Possibly. Uh, the three flat. I, yeah, I think there's. They're saying that there's a uh, closing schedule for next month. You know, early in May, May third or May eighth. But I, you know, it's scheduled, but it's not. You know. Definite, yeah, but I, I'm pretty sure it's sold. They, they had the appraiser out, and they had uh, their banks approved them already for the loan. You know, they had to get a big loan on there too. So that was what was holding you up as far as moving. And then, so you could, if that sells, then you can sell your house, and then you can move. Is that what I understand? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, but the thing is, I probably have to stay here if I want to save about twenty thousand. I got to live here for about two years. I thought that was two years ago that you said that. Yeah, that was at the other house, though. I was staying at the other. I had an apartment there at the other house. Do you think sh Chicago will be here in two years? No, probably not. <laughs> it's do you not think Chicago. Do you think the pronunciation is Chicago? Don't you think you maybe should just like swallow the twenty grand and get the yeah, we're thinking, Well, we're thinking about it. Yeah, we're actually. Yeah, I know it's it. that's a tough thing to do, but we've got Charlton trying to get in. Uh, is there yeah. anyone willing to not go away, but just let yeah. me move you backstage? Yes, I I will, but I wanted to show you one thing before I go. Because sure, you're, you're let me give you full screen. Hold on, let me figure out how to do it. I'm forgetting how to do all this garbage. No, okay, sure. here we go. Kevin has these. This is a series that came out three months ago, and each issue is. Oh, yeah, wow. I had that one. Yeah, it takes off, take off on. Uh, and then that's when it came out yesterday. And, uh, yeah, unfortunately, wow. the, the the book itself isn't as good as the covers, but the covers are awesome. But, um, well, yeah, I see that they're awesome, but man, I, I can't afford to buy books if they're <laughs> shitty inside. They're Although not, that probably, shitty, but they're, they're it's just, I was hoping it, you know, that the, the story itself would, you know, be as cool as covers. It, not quite, but I'm, I'm, I'm still going to get the last one anyway. Um, I will, you know, I will abdicate my seat to Charlton. And I said, I've got a best of stream here in 20 minutes anyway. So if you're, so still where are going, you going to be so we can watch it tomorrow? Uh, Geeky Puppet Show, and and if you guys oh. are if you're still going when we wrap up, I'll come back on. All right, sounds good. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, cool. Take care. All right, Eric. we'll get Charlton right, care, in. Eric. Uh oh. Okay. Charlton. All right, cool. TV. Hey, what's up, you guys? Hi, how you doing? Fine. How you doing? Okay, man. All right. Good. What happened? What happened to Doctor Phoebe's? He's here, but I can only have six people on. Oh. Oh. But he, he's still there. I still see him. Boy, he he lights himself so well. It looks like like uh, the movie Creep Show. He's got or a, or a Basil Gogo's painting. He's got red hitting him here and purple over here. It's great. I wish I could do that. <laughs> so. Uh, <laughs> hey, let me let me make Meyer bigger oh, here. A hat. Oh, oh yeah! Wow, that was loud. Yes. That's so last <laughs> night I'm watching Micah's stream, and I hear you say that you were on the Saipan. I was. And, uh, I was there a couple different times, and it's a, uh, it's really cool. I mean, I got this hat probably where at the little canteen where you you know I think I paid three dollars for it. When yeah, I was there. yeah, down by the barber shop. Um. I worked in your uh, this, that little sick bay a couple different times there. Um, we landed our helicopters on there. We we trained with that ship a couple different times. I mean, I did, but my unit I think probably trained more often. No, nice. we flew from Fort Bragg to Norfolk, uh, landed on the Saipan. The first time I was there, I went with my flight surgeon, and we stayed there. I was a combat medic with uh, Air Cavalry, and, and okay. so we trained with Marine Recon and our helicopters guys. Trained with your helicopter guys. I remember our pilot, or with the Marines, my helicopter mm -hmm. pilots, would be, and the uh, air crew would be hanging out with your guys in the, nice. uh, that that hangar. Uh, I've been there and spent a lot of nights on that ship, man. I probably spent eight or ten nights over a couple of years span on. on awesome, that's awesome. The only Navy ship that I ever slept on and spent the night the night on, and uh, I take my hat <laughs> off. Closed quarters in those small areas. 
we yeah. were all bundled because we're used to sleeping outdoors on the ground. And so mm -hmm. being in that closed area with all of our gear and we carry everything with us. So it's, a, it's something we weren't used to, but the food was right. really good. We always had a great time. Everybody was nice. Your medical staff was great. And as far as the technology that you guys had on your ship in your sick bay, we're used to doing everything out of helicopters and out of big, you know, green metal boxes. We carry everything with us and we start mm -hmm. from the ground up. But you guys had all this equipment and this setup that was really nice and that we were we were like training and being prepared if we needed to come and, and be working operations off. Awesome. It was great times. 86 awesome, and 87. Man. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah, it was great. It was great hearing you say the ship's name because I mean, like you said, it's gone now. Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, it's history. Yeah, I appreciate that, man. Thanks for sharing this. this that's excellent. What kind of I ship? Was on this, I was on that ship from eight, late 85 to early 89. What kind of you would have been there? You were there when I was there, Steve. You were there that's when I awesome. was there. That's awesome. What kind it's of ship? Pirate ship. Amphibious. Amphibious <laughs> assault craft. LHA, landing helicopter, assault or attack. It's uh -huh. either or. Carrying Marines. Um, sea King, Sea Knights, Harriers, Apaches, mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. Wow, man. we were That's landing our Apaches in a black box on your ship. Is what we were okay. with. That's awesome. Good deal. That's cool. Um, you were on there at the same time, were you? Without knowing it, knowing yeah. it? you were yeah. on the yeah, you were uh, on there yeah, for at the same time. time. Mm -hmm. Wow, man. Yeah, you would have been on the crew, and I was there for for we, we, what do they call it? Uh, cross branch training, or what did they call mm -hmm. it? Inner, like we did it all the time. Yeah, man, that's that's incredible that's that we were there. Weird, the same time. Man. You, did you guys just find that out now? Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah just, just last night. Said that, and this is a small small ship right steve like a very specialized thing yeah it we had two thousand um, marines or amphibious units and we had 985 sailors man that is so strange man but yeah i can't cool. believe that oh, not cool yeah and i had this i had the hat the whole time so i had to dig it out and go going through this bag of hats i'm like i know that that <laughs> saipan hat is in here all this time yeah Nice. It's a new fact simile coming out next week. Green Lantern showcase. It's pretty cool. I uh, one thing I was finding, I was trying to find these because I was talking about these the other day with Meyer, and. Um, now, I don't think I've ever really shown these. In um, October, November of 1998, I put together um, a magazine with the students writing. These were sixth graders writing, and I thought, I, you know, I, I learned to love to read from comics and magazines, and I thought, well, I'll create something that's and try to recreate the magic of stuff I saw when I was a kid and make the kids published writers so other kids would say, you know, I, I like what you wrote, and then they would feel less reluctant to write. Anyway, I'd steal from everything like that. That was stolen from the magazine that respects for intelligence from amazing adult fantasy, and yeah. this is when the Spice Girls were popular, and so I tried to include things that were popular with them, although I like the Spice Girls too, honestly. This this bed here was drawn by Joe Riley, that uh, the hypnotic eye guy. That was drawn by me, and um, and so I, I, I it was just cut and pasted. I take the stars from one magazine, and the, uh, I just it was just it's like a fanzine except it's uh, so then you know I got some. That's some student art. She's writing about Sporty Spice. And so I take what they write about this stuff and then um, make it look somewhat professional, best I could. They write about all saints in sync, writing their ghost stories. And, Isn't that similar uh, to the hypnotic eye? What's that? Isn't that similar to the hypnotic eye, what you uh, published, what you did? Um. Well, the hypnotic eye was before this. I used to do a magazine called The Sophisticate, 
but it was uh, not. Uh, it was it was more of an R-rated magazine, wow. and that was that was that was years before, and that's from from that. It it looked very much the same, except yeah. it was a bigger format. But but yeah, Joe Riley did say he wanted to make a video version of the Sophisticate, and that for the the you know. And so I I would just anytime I found cool ads like this Batman and Robin fan club, I'd include it. And, this I found, I think, in a boy's life, but I thought this would be interesting to steal and put in this magazine. And yeah. um, <laughs> so, um, what else? Pretty neat. Hey, hey Gratu, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to click it. out. I'm breaking up, and I'm gonna click out so you can bring Fibes back in. All right. Oh, okay, but you'll come back, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay, Fibes and the stage. Okay, so. Sorry to be self-indulgent. I just um, okay. So here's the Godzilla sketch. <laughs> yeah. Um, so then I, I I put Annabelle Lee in here. Just some kid writing about Robbie the robot. They had no idea that who Robbie the robot was. I just gave them this drawing and said, yeah. write a story about this. Yeah, that's that's great. And then. It's a sixth grade survey, what movies and things they like. And the school was, was that probably the, 90, 95 percent. They spoke Spanish at home. So I, you know, I'd, I'd have I'd, I'd show a kid, okay, this is a really great Spanish artist. Research him and, and write this article. So, so here's a kid writing, he, he had no idea who this was before I stared him into it. Writing about Sergio Aragonis and all that, and so and then there's not writing about El Santo. So, um, but uh, here's a comic strip one of them did. So, you know, some, some, if I could, like the girl that wrote this article the day the dinosaurs came to our school, she later became a teacher and uh. So did, um, um, there was another guy in here. Yeah, there's his name. He's writing. He's, he's writing a summary of the movie Blade. He, he also became a teacher. So um, then people writing about wrestling updates. No, oh, WCW. That's funny. K Dong is tighter than ever. I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't have published that. That doesn't sound right, but. Was there a curtain called K Dong? <laughs> oh, Hopefully he wasn't trying to kid me. Um, this is this is a drawing Joe Riley did, and I included it. Well, that's pretty because, good. Yeah, because he was phenomenal. Well, that's excellent. And then I just put this on the back. But but what I was talking about is I was. I had them read because back then they didn't have a curriculum. They just said, this is what you need to teach them. Use whatever. And so I was using a princess of Mars and different Edgar Rice Burroughs books. And so in one of these, there are several of them. You see their um, interpretations. They're what they pictured in their mind as they read it. So I'm trying to find that. But see, I would, I would make, try to make it look mid century and you know, and, and include they didn't even know who the monsters were, but Gratu, well, how many of those books do you have? So we can, I'm sorry, how many of those books do you have? Of uh, you know, various ones did was there just that one publication or numerous? Oh, well, I started doing this, but then at a certain point, uh, someone it was a, it was a small school, so it was a training school for principals, so that principals would only be there two years and then they either wash out or they'd be moved up to a bigger school with more students. So no one ever fully cleared out the office. There was a filing cabinet. There was a principal that was there from the early 1930s to about 1966. And there was still stuff in the filing cabinet of his that no one got around to cleaning out. They were just too busy. And it turned out he had kept a copy of every school newspaper um, from the mid thirties to around the Kennedy era. So I, and then I found some later in closets and things that were a little bit later. And so I realized, okay, I'm, 
there's an actual school newspaper that was not called that. So I gave this up and started, I just kept the same volume, you know, as if the thing had never stopped. And I started publishing with that title, which was called the Daggerette. And so I just basically revived their newspaper, but in a smaller format. So, but this was done for quite a few years in late nineties, early two thousands. But um, I have an article on Van Williams because he went to the high school, right? About a couple miles away from the school. <laughs> this stuff, I can't. Um, let's see. There's a drawing I did. <laughs> um, okay, all right. Here's an article on War of the Worlds. I think that's what I did. I played the War of the Worlds and then for them and had them write about it. Then I, no, I had them draw illustrations of what they were hearing. <laughs> and then, and then I moved into. Oh, that's terrible. That's when everyone was waiting for the Star Wars, the Phantom Menace, and you had little sketches coming out on the internet, but then it turned out to be completely disappointing. Ooh. So you're all writing about Scary Spice, Melanie Brown, kids drawing Dragon Ball Z characters. Yeah. Okay, it doesn't look like there's any... There's a kid drawing Yogi Bear. That's not bad. Um, issue three is some. I found all the originals of these, and I found some of the originals of the Sophisticate. Some of you, I know, Doc, uh, Captain Strange Life has been wanting copies of those. Oh, you remember that? Yeah, that was a long time. Oh, yeah, ago. but I found some this morning. Mm -hmm. The originals, just a matter of. Of finding a place that has a photocopier in the, the yeah, that's gonna be tough around there. But uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, uh, okay. Yeah, you're, you're covering King Kong versus Godzilla back in. Uh, okay, this is the cover. <laughs> um, what is uh, April nineteen ninety nine? Okay, well, it doesn't look like there's any. Oh, yes, there is. Look at that. Looks like Eddie Munster. No, not, not the Dragon Ball guy. The... No, the Martian. Yeah. Uh, King Lorquas Tomo. <laughs> oh, there's another one. I bet that, that, oh, and another one there. I think there was a whole bunch in issue three, and issue three, I couldn't find a copy of it. And I, but I have the original downstairs. Maybe I'll show it next time. Some of them were so thick, you know, that it's starting to get so ridiculously yeah. thick. This is probably why, um, yeah, this is why I, I because I, I noticed Night Tiger is always saying, I bought I bought this really cheap, but it's missing four wraps. And, and I'm thinking, <laughs> isn't that 16 pages? Yeah. <laughs> I four mean, wraps, but, but I'm realizing it's because the Golden Age comics were so thick that a staple can't hold them all together. So, And that's what I discovered back then, because the kids, they would always lose the inside pages. And that's the same thing that would have happened to their grand great-grandparents in the golden age of comics because here here so i started this is when i was full into the edgar rice burroughs stuff with them and i started printing you know here's other adaptations of, you know how other people have seen these <laughs> i don't know there's uh <laughs> that's bob clampett have you ever seen that uh I know Jet Clampett. <laughs> no, Bob Bob Clampett, the Warner Brothers guy, you know, Bugs Bunny, um, Porky Pig, Bob Clampett. You see, yeah. um, he, anyway, he filmed about a minute or maybe two minutes of footage of, uh, of 
you know, John Carter on on his horse and some sword fighting, and he was it was just a proposal for making a John Carter cartoon in probably late 30s, right about the time that the Superman Fleischer cartoon, but it just never was made. Um, someone in a dentist's office? Not me. It sounds like that, you know, that thing they stick in your mouth to suck out. <laughs> sounds like a baby rattle. <laughs> yeah, it did. <laughs> I don't know, man. Um, some of these have... I don't throw them up. Yeah. Um, uh, um, here I stole an R. Crumb illustration. <laughs> an issue about the future. And, uh, <laughs> oh, and I was showing them the Flash Gordon serial too, and they love that. He said, I have read the gods of Mars. <laughs> it's, it's all very insane, I guess. Wait a second. Is this the one I just showed? It's the one I just showed you. I told myself, it's just they have variant covers. <laughs> I was thinking, if anyone had the same center for as the other one. Sometimes I print different covers, and this I stole from famous monsters. You know, I just cut and pasted, sh shrunk, enlarged. Best issue ever, 100 pages. I got the spaceship ad again. It's just um, stuff printed from the early days of the internet. Um, this is how DC depicted all that, where it's just a very different way of. Imagining page, that page before that was uh, at the Earth's core, I believe. Was it? What Jay did Allen, I do here? Jay Allen St. John painting. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I have their the, about the the football team at the school, and then someone's writing about how exciting it was that the WWF came to Dallas, and uh, then it's just Edgar Rice Burroughs coverage, and some of these kids were going out and finding these books that. The local thrift store, and they were excited about it. This is uh, this is when Ma uh, Mastermind of Mars was printed. Yep, <laughs> that's a big annual book too. Um. <clears throat> oh yeah, there's this is just as good as Rosetta. What do you think? Those, those little uh, Tyrannosaurus Rex arms coming out, <laughs> the torsos of the of the. Uh, <laughs> That's about the quality of my ability to draw. <laughs> well, there's some. There's another Joe Riley drawing with Spectre Man. Uh, no, Joe Riley. I was afraid Drew might try to chew this up. This is also Edgar Rice Burroughs related. <laughs> This is from um, March of 2004 in Dallas. These kids were throwing things at the gorilla down in the enclosure, and the gorilla just said, F this, and jumped up out of there and started running around the zoo. And I just thought, what What if Tarzan had shown up and <laughs> had to subdue? Because he was, he was turning over baby carriages and running around. The, the, the coverage on the news was hilarious. I think they did kill the gorilla, so it did have a sad. Yeah, that's what it says in the headline. So it that it had a sad ending, but. Uh, <laughs> Can you imagine uh, if that happened today? Oh my stupid, god! Stupid kids. Yeah, yeah. This is uh, some friends. Of They're making me nervous. Wanted to eat everything in here. Some friends of mine. Uh, they had a. Robert Tilton fan club, a tongue-in-cheek Robert Tilton fan club. That's a whole nother story. Anyway, that's enough of that. I just wanted to know. Actually, I put together some comics. And two, didn't I? Yeah, it's just like, this is just bootleg comics that they could read. No, it isn't. Well, some of it is. It's got some John Carter stuff, but, and King Kong. I showed him King Kong and stuff. 
I don't know what's in here. Oh, it has the first Wonder Woman story. I stole that. Anyway, so uh, uh, enough of me. What's going on with everybody? What are you guys doing? I got a couple of books if I want to. Let's see. These are these are recent editions. Um. Here's a Texan from uh, oh, hey, Bob Lovers. Beautiful. That's a really good one. <laughs> That's a great one. It, how expensive would it be to get a book like that? Like this? Well, well, I mean, I, it's in great condition, but how is that a book that you have to pay at least 100 bucks, probably? Or what do you paid 120 for it. Okay, yeah. yeah that, uh, he wanted yeah. like 161. Captain, is the cover newsprint? I do believe it is. That's why it's not that, that's why it's probably not that glossy. Yeah. Graphic Man and uh, Charlton had a great show last night. Why, thank you. Thank you very much. When, when the cover is newsprint, it makes me think of the, yeah, the big know. boy comics. Remember, yeah. you get them get free at big boy restaurant. Yeah, but that's beautiful. That's, that's gorgeous. gorgeous. Very you know, nice. Bob Lovers. What a name, huh? Bob Lovers. Got his name right there. There's two pieces out here, though. I think uh -oh. Oh, little piece out on the bottom there. Mm -hmm. Oh, it does look bad. Bob lovers. I so I picked that up. That was, was that recent? Yeah, it was in the last uh, couple of weeks. And then I got this one. I've been looking for this for a long time. I think uh, Jambo, Jamie has this as well. Mm-hmm. A nice one. Very nice. Real good. You gotta wonder what that Indian's looking at. That little uh... <laughs> look at that man. I mean... <laughs> yeah, his eyes on that uh, white woman. White school. <laughs> Can't blame him. Uh, she looks better than those guys down below. So. Absolutely. Uh, what did I... Did I pay... I'm confused now. I think I might have paid 120 on this one. And I can't remember what I... I have to look it up. I'm not sure. Now. I might have confused that with this. With the, wait a minute. What, let me, I can tell you right now. I think I got a receipt here. Okay, this one is the one that cost 120 20 bucks. Oh, I never keep receipts with the books. I don't want any evidence to be ever discovered. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know what the other one cost now. It wasn't a, it must have been less. It couldn't have been 100. Just switch out the receipts with stuff from a dollar store and stuff them in the back of the comics. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But then, but then the, the your loved ones might think that it's yeah. a worthless book and right. sell it for nothing. <laughs> you can't really yeah, win. Oh, yeah. There's something for uh, more or less for uh, Thanksgiving. But... That's, not, that's the turkey. It sounds like this turkey. Yeah, it did sound like the turkey. That's a nice book, Captain. Turkey's hiding. <laughs> <laughs> That's Drew. Drew the dog. Drew the turkey dog. I got another copy of that. Excellent. Oh, oh man. Hey, 15 bucks for this. Well worth it. It's a very nice book. Yeah. Well, we got just. Jim Apparel oh, cool. cover. That was the second missile that went off. <laughs> I heard it. It did sound like a missile. Very nice. Here comes the third. 
That's a cool cover. That's a cool book. Yeah. Yeah. I got this up on. Uh, I post posted this up on uh, Instagram with some music. And you got. Ed. <laughs> Ed. Oh, nice. Ed Hannigan oh, wow. is the guy's name that did the cover. I I don't know who he is actually. Ed Hannigan, and then the inks were by uh, Tony uh, Zaniga or Zaniga. I can't. I don't know how to pronounce his name. He's Tony Zaniga. Zaniga. Yeah. yeah. These black covers are pretty hard to, you know, get in a nice high grade. But... It's really neat they're putting that freeway through here. Yeah. <laughs> Holy crap, man. I think uh, somebody's possessed, man. Sounds like the exorcist was needed. What's, what's that? I think Traffic. we need the exorcist. Traffic on the highway. Oh. <laughs> Then I got this House of Secrets. I just got this recently. Yes, oh. I have that somewhere. Nice. That is, uh, I think, Louis Dominguez. I, I'm i pretty sure. Wait a minute. If I remember the story. He wants the very talented hands, and but there's a price to pay. Yeah. Probably Luis, don't you think? I got some of that there. Probably Louis. Oh, oh, I know where that came from. That came from Gotham City. The expressway noise. I went outside oh, no. for a little bit. Yeah, that must be exactly. Yeah. I went outside because you uh Alice Cooper has something going on across the street. Oh really? <laughs> oh Alice. Yeah, we thought that uh some missiles went off. Hands over there playing. <laughs> Do you see movie. over there? Can you see the uh, mural of Alice on the wall over there? No. No, I can't. He's a School. Detroit boy. School's out. Yeah, it's right over there. Alice Cooper's father was a minister. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, he's... He's kind of uh, now. So is he, I believe. Yeah, yeah he's, he's kind of again. returned to that mindset. Yes, he has. He's a born again Christian. Pretty yeah, loud. Shameless self promotion, Kevin. <laughs> Shameless. Is that, uh, uh, I'm, start, I'm just sitting here paranoid because I don't know what the dog is going to start trying to eat next. <laughs> and she prefers the older, older <laughs> the kind better, of older age. Like we all do. Well, but to eat, we don't eat them. <laughs> she, uh, she, you know, dogs eat grass when their stomach's out of order. Well, yes. I took her out to eat grass, but no, she does, she wants to eat vintage paper, and that's kind of a problem. Yeah, <laughs> so I see what she was eating, and she did not want to give up that piece of paper. She's like, ah, that's what you guys are. <laughs> <laughs> so she'll do that in the middle of the night. That's why we can't have her sleep in the bed with us because if she gets startled awake, you know, she goes into that psycho mode. And then she realizes, oh, it's someone I like. <laughs> but after she's bitten your toes. Uh, let's see what we got here in Gotham. What are we looking at here? Super baby. Yeah, but what is in what publication is this reprint here? I wasn't paying attention. 
It's DC goes eight. It's a trade oh, paperback. Okay. Is, it, is it all vintage eight stuff? Yeah. Oh, shit. <laughs> That's great. I wonder if I think I have that with a different cover, though. Did so I come out with a different cover? DC's going to give it a try again. They're going to try to put apes on all the covers. <laughs> They're that desperate, huh? They are that desperate. Do they own some? Or do they? Is the new Planet of the Apes movie coming out through Warner that they own or something? Marvel owns that, I think. Really? I don't. I mean, is I know another Marvel. Planet of the Apes movie coming out. Yeah, yeah, I think there is one soon. That Marvel's doing that uh, promotion though. They already have the the license for that. Yeah. It's Fox. from the from the clip I saw. It seemed to be focused on Nova because you can't have a male, you know. Everyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll suck. So, so they're trying to imply that the apes are communist with that cover. There, they're very subtle, aren't they? Have <laughs> a sickle and the hammer, yeah. and the football pads too. Yeah, <laughs> interesting. What is my wife saying Rochester for? Is, she, is that a Jack Benny reference? Did we say something about what she's talking about? Uh, oh, Rochester Teens. Oh, yeah, he's never been on, has he? Yeah, he's a guy that's been, uh, I've been talking to him on the internet. I didn't even notice. My wife pointed it out. Rochester team set. Yeah, he puts out a great fanzine. He sent me stuff back over 10 years ago. He was always trying to get me to look at his fanzine. He sent some to me. Yeah, that's cool. I don't know. That's great. Yeah. Fantastic. Maybe you'll come on, uh, Rochester, come on uh, Saturday on my birthday live stream. I'll have more, possibly more slots where people can squeeze in. What happened to the clowns? Let me see what's going on with them. They, they were all excited about coming uh, in. They they almost got stranded in Italy, and they had to go to the consulate, and, and they paid their plane fare back. Some circus in Italy was shafting them. Uh, uh, well, Gratu, I will step out, and uh, maybe one of them nice people could come in. Well, I want well, there's, there's no I one in the waiting room, but you're welcome. Yeah. If you've got stuff to do, that's fine. But yeah. I want to say, say goodbye to Captain and Charlton and Dr. Fibes and uh, Kevin, if he can hear me, and yourself, Gratu. Uh, yeah, well, thanks. Have a great Micah. rest of the stream, so we'll, we'll check you later. Have a good evening, Micah. All right, take care. Right. Micah, Micah, bye, Micah. Take care. Thank you. Okay, so let me see what's going on here, man. What's going on? Uh, I was contacting people on Instagram. Let's let me see what's happening there. Hey, look at here. I got I got a adventure comics with uh, what's her name? Talib Rashid, Rashida Talib or Talib Rashida on the cover. Oh wait, let me find the her. Crazy, whatever hell her name is. Yeah, hey, she's a she's another whack job. What is going on with my screen? One second, guys. I don't know what's happening here. <laughs> He's a total whack job, man. Hold on. I'm, I'm trying to give you full screen, but they put a bunch of news articles in front of me. What is this garbage? Oh. Come on, man, you fools. Okay, um, Jesus. Okay, um, okay, all right, what is this? Rashida Talib? No, Rashida Talib, uh, one of the, the uh, so called uh, squad. <laughs> that is her. Oh, oh, yeah, oh, well, yeah. Well, it's not really her, it's just kind of okay. I see what yeah, you're saying. Her. Her. Looks like there's two of them right there. <laughs> they both look just like her. Yeah, yeah. Mean yeah. and ugly, man. Oh. 
this year. Yeah, I don't know that issue. That's cool. There's a Superman. It's pal Jimmy Olsen. Um, and what that, was that a comic shop? And they had half price. Uh, everything was half price. This nine dollars was actually uh, four fifty. I have that one. Yeah, I do. Beatlemania. Beatlemania. Hilarious. <laughs> and then here's the heartburn cover. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Owens, I won't rest until I find you. And then I think I already showed this. Red mask. Uh, I was Very able to get all the crayon marks off of it. Oh, yeah. What did you use for that? Pardon me? How did you get the that off? I used the drafting eraser, and then uh, where it was really hard, I used some goo gone, really light goo gone on a uh, cotton swab. And it. Well, this stuff uh, evaporates extremely fast. That's why it doesn't stain. It doesn't leave any stain. Oh, you cool. can use uh, soft erasers, too. Okay. I am going to get upgraded to a better stream yard within a few days. But it's really annoying. Spinner Rack's trying to get in now. and uh, okay, Yeah, that's... You know what? I can, hey, uh, I can leave, guys, because I'm going to go home right now, and then maybe I'll oh, come back on later. Okay. Sounds, That's about sounds time. Great. It's too noisy anyway. <laughs> I know. <laughs> okay. Cool. So, so, man, just... so Spinner Rack comes in. Hey, Hi, Spinner Rack. Rack. Hey, guys. Hey, hey Spinner Rack. Okay. Rack. So, so let me figure out, as far as logistically, Thursday nights, it conflicts with geeky puppets, right? When do they start? Well, they're they're Friday night. They're on Sunday. I don't know. I think they were on Wednesday. As well. And they're on Thursday night too. They can't have every night of the week. That's not I know. fair. I know it's crazy. <laughs> I, I, I'm putting my flag down, and I'm going to claim this as a Thursday night, but because they're on all the time. I, they're on in the middle of the workday. Yeah, they're on a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not. Knocking them, but I, I, I want to, you know, I, I'm really enjoying Micah's new format and everything. But I, I kind of like to see my friends every week, yeah, especially cool have everybody on, you know, especially, especially, yeah. But I like everybody. I like the spontaneity of everybody there, and and also things are yeah, about to get a lot darker over the next year or two. Yeah, and and it's just be a nice place to hang out and talk because that's why I'm glad that you're doing this. That's why you know. Well, I, I'm not. I'm, it's not a reactionary thing. I just it's just like no, mental. Uh, what do you call it? Mental health. <laughs> it's like an AA meeting for a bunch of <laughs> idiot collectors. You know. Um, well, but I, uh, I'm doing fine. How are you doing, William? Oh yeah. In the chat there. Yeah! 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 And Stanley Jake, oh, hello, everybody. Always late to the party. I just got off work. I want to meet this guy. Um, he lives near me. And when I first moved here, he was going to come visit. But then it was always, nah, I'm busy. I, but And he sent me some cool stuff like, guys, did you know Mr. Monster was a Golden Age character? You probably yeah. all know that. Yeah, Canadian comic book series. Yeah, but see, I didn't know that. Yeah. Of course, you guys know it because you're all like Eric Green, but I didn't know it. He sent me a big book collection of the original Mr. Monster he stuff. Cool. And, yeah. And he's he's like someone that knows about some of these underground uh, rockabilly kind of cramps kind of comics that I had no idea existed. And so, Stanley J. Yeah. Kirby, let me put the link here in the chat. Because I've never even seen, I've just seen a picture of him on Instagram. I, I've never met him. And Jambo's in the chat, too. You're welcome in, too, Jambo. Um, anyway. So. What does she mean over there, uh, Rochester? Is, that, is she talking about the Benny? Uh, no, there's, there's, a, there's, there's, there's th this guy here. Rochester Teen Set Insider is the name of his fanzine that he's been putting. He's oh. like an old punk rocker. And he's been following me on Instagram or whatever format I was on for several generations, probably. But now he's he's actually linked up with me here. Uh, you know, he's 
he's just someone I've always known from the internet. Yeah, I see him now. Yeah, Rochester team set. So if he wanted to come on, that would be great. Uh, I'm trying to get on Andy Halloween and and Amy Vampy, who who run the Dark Ride. You know the Dark Ride Dracula channel, Hans. No, I've heard of it. I've heard of it. What channel? Yeah, they're, they're toy collectors, and oh, and the the clowns say I hate to call them the clowns. <laughs> they probably hate that. They say, okay, give us a second. How do we do it? Um, uh, click. They've come on before. Click on link in chat. I hate typing. People leave these long comments, and then I just say, say thanks. It's, like, it's hard for me to see the, this shit. Um, and I guess I sound rude. Um, on show. Here's something cool from my Let me know when they're in the waiting room. No, hey, back. Hey, let, let me give you full screen there. Charlton. Oh, that's nice. nice. That's a good you know, cover. This is, it seems pretty a, a pretty simple cover, but it's so colorful, man. Mm -hmm. No, it's beautiful. I wouldn't call that simple. That's gorgeous. Um, yeah. Oops. Too bad. It's <laughs> <laughs> well, that's that. Isn't that an easy fix for you with that bending? Yeah, I can. Yeah, I'm gonna fix that. But that that is just. I mean, it, it was only a uh, a dollar, so I don't. Mm -hmm. That's a slab candidate. I'll say. <laughs> Very nice. And then I got one more. I'm going to show you real real quick while I'm here. This was this was five bucks. And uh, who's this? I is this Helmet Publications or is this Dead Eye Ooh. Western? Oh, look at that guy flying over the top of the thing. What is this? Uh, Hillman, Hillman periodicals from 1953. Mm. Pretty nice shape. Yeah, I mean, those are the kind of westerns that I mean they're they're like I like the really violent ones or the ones about criminals as opposed to the more wholesome ones. Although I like them too. You know, it's really. Oh, well, I'm finding some cool stuff here. <laughs> okay, I'm done here. No, I'm not. I, that was not what I'm trying to imply. Oh, I know, I know, I know that. Um, <laughs> I'm just excited that I'm finding. Ooh, that one I can't show. Um, here, let me flip over to me for a second. This is a uh, <clears throat> some uh, back when you made audio cassette collections oh, yeah. of music. I would sometimes do these little sketch. Let me make sure that making sure the writing on the side isn't going to dox anyone. Looks like it's an address. How to get to someone's house. But anyway, like patriotic songs, vampires tape of torment. Um, different <laughs> this was drawn by a student, King Kong and Fay Ray. Doesn't really look like Fay Ray, but. Hey, Electra. There yeah. was this girl that all she would draw is Bambi, but she was really good, and, and I saved all her drawings. So. This is um, some original art of a comic strip I did for the Sophisticate. I don't know. It might have some inappropriate words, but <laughs> the Tracy Chapman <laughs> fan. Here's a Dallas Fantasy Fair uh, booklet from 1995. Wow. These are the stars that they have. Um, Wow. So they had a, a big, you know, magazine. Look, you could meet Vampirella in person. And uh, then the DEF CON 2, you could meet Todd McFarlane. <laughs> He's got this movie star mugshot where he looks like, uh, like the guy from Land of the Giants. <laughs> so, um, which I thought was brilliant when... Uh, Alex Ross, basically, uh, when he did that Fantastic Four oversized book and he drew Mr. Fantastic and, oh, and yeah. Storm as the basically right from the, you could tell he had a Land of the Giants disc set 
and he would mm. freeze frame shots and, and and I thought that was great because they you know if there had been a Fantastic Four TV series back then they might have been possibly cast. Speaking mm. of Fantastic Four, you give some a kid that's never heard of the Fantastic Four, don't know what it is, a, a page because I would copy original art that especially from those tomorrow's magazines, they would have original art in black mm -hmm. and white. You could blow it up to the right size. So it's a coloring page because, and <laughs> this is the original art of the fantastic four t-shirt they used to sell that I always thought was great. <laughs> and this kid had no idea what color to color. The, and look at, look at the insane colors. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's great. Yeah, but that's awesome. Awesome. That's something I like the blue flame, and it looks like this was stuff I copied off the internet to throw into that magazine I put out. And of course, um, you see the the type the names Lay Brackett and Bradbury and um, Lay Brackett. People forget about her, but um, she was a very much a Burroughs style writer and that's why she wrote the script to the empire strikes back at, at least the first draft of it but then i had access to a color printer for a while which i wish i had one now that worked but this made me think i need this comic this would be the ultimate comic that this is probably what would you say hans is this like a thousand dollar comic or more or for 21 I mean, it's, just look at the blood. <laughs> this is yeah. Great. Yeah, if that was uh, in that kind nice. of condition, probably. <laughs> With Nancy right next, it's just it's great. Ungraded, that is. This is, my, this is my high school newspaper um, <clears throat> from my high school and the neighboring high school. Uh, this is from April of 1983. Is came this <laughs> Pan Pantera. But that's when they were in high school <laughs> in 1983. Look at those 80s. That's the article written by some girl. Pantera's debut album, Metal Magic, arrives. And here's another um, picture a student did of John Carter. <laughs> it looks like wrestlers. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. I love it. That was the great thing, getting all these it's like outsider art. You get all these sketches by children of what these characters, because that, that's what these books were written for. They were like the Harry Potter of that time period. And I would tell them, okay, if, if you tell your little brother or sister to draw a Martian and you give them some crayons, what color are they going to grab? And they all say green. And I said, well, why do we all think Martians are green? Why do we think they're little green men? It's a red planet. Why don't we think they're red? What? And just like, where did that come from? It's, it's yeah. explained, because this was a really popular series of books, but it's been forgotten now because it was never filmable. They could make Tarzan movies pretty cheap, but you couldn't do all this other stuff. So those books were forgotten. And I said, well, this character first sees the first Martians on Mars or, or Barsoom, he sees these little eggs hatching and these little green men come out of them, these little baby Starks. And it's like, that's, and, and I, I can't 100% prove, but as far as I can deduce, that's where the green, the idea of Martians being green comes from. Because where else would it have come from? What about the world's predates John Carter, but they weren't described as green, so. Look at this. this is kind of a creepy book. Look at this. <laughs> this is a, like a little puppet book. I didn't even know I owned this. I just, do you guys like find things? And it's like, how, I don't remember ever buying that. I must have bought a bunch of stuff at estate sales. And um, Okay, what are people saying here in the chat? Uh, Jambo is just watching tonight. In other words, he's in his underwear. Have a good, <laughs> <laughs> good, good, just good to see the gang. Sorry, I missed Micah and Eric. Um, yeah, that looks mint condition. No, that looks mint captain. Sorry. Uh, Stanley Jinker, you ain't missing much by not having seen my picture. Trust me. Yeah, but come on. We want to talk to you, man. 
Okay. Yeah, somebody wants to come on, I can knock off. You know. Uh I don't. I, I hate this. That's why this is what they do. YouTube puts a million commercials on to force you into paying twenty five dollars to not have commercials. And the Streamyard, yeah. If, once once you have a bunch of friends on, then you have to make the Sophie's choice. What was it? Sophie's choice. She had to. She had two kids. She had to choose between one. I'm giving away the ending of the movie. I'm sorry, but it's been out for 45 years. I never even seen it. Yeah, that was the the gist. The the German that soldier. Was, that was it, right? And then right. the whole movie. You no, know, she's kind of this weird woman, and you don't. Why is she so weird? And then you find out she had to make this choice in the camps in World yes. War II. As I recall, so I've ruined the movie, so you don't have to watch it. So you just <laughs> save money, guys. Thank, thank you. Can thank me later. Hey, Greg, too. Let me uh, let me show one thing. Oh um, yes, sorry, I've completely ignored you. Spinner. No way, that's okay. <laughs> Main reason I came on is when Kevin was flipping through that uh, book. I think he flipped through this cover. Yeah, I got that book. Yeah. And Man, I, I said in, the, in the chat, I said I think I've got that cover, and and I there it is. I. What's driving me crazy is I think I have that ape book, and if I don't have yeah. it, why the hell don't I have it? And I, but I think it had a different cover. You know, and there's a super monkey from Krypton. You know, like they got horses and monkeys yeah. and dogs. Uh, anyway, I just wanted to show that real quick. How could anyone like the John Byrne era of Superman better than that era of Superman? I can't fathom how people can be so I mentally. Can, Ill. I can show a few other things. If oh, you want sorry. <laughs> no, that's all right. No, I want to see it. I want to see it. Oh, that's anyway. great. Steve, by the way, I thought I had a, a good uh, Western collection, but you two guys put me to shame last night. Oh, I appreciate it. But yeah, it's a great book and book right there. I got that one too. Mike has probably got it because he has classic That's a great series. book. That's a great book. Hans, you've got everything. So. No, not really. <laughs> yeah. He's X number five. <clears throat> oh, look at that. That's a great cover. That Oregon Trail has got a lot of detail in it. Mm hmm. I'd love to come on, but I have to get back to work early, says Stanley J. Kirby. If this is a Thursday night thing, I'll become a regular. Yes. Come back every uh, Thursday, Stanley J. Kirby. This is something that I wouldn't have had in my collection until I met you guys. Ah, cool. Yeah, now, cool. you don't have to be Micah to turn that into something. All you need is a red marker, and you can make it look like he's just been shot. All you have to do wow, is put man. some red blood spray on it. There's my top yeah, that, cat, Soki. That's that's have you ever had hemorrhoids? That's what it feels like. That cover there. <laughs> so my, my wife's favorite uh, character is a uh, ghost rider and her favorite team is X-Men. I have a, a fair number of X-Men, not a full run, but uh, so I'm kind of yes. starting to work on maybe trying to fill in a few X-Men just because of her. The, the Western Ghost Rider or the Skull Ghost Rider? Uh, the the uh, Marvel Skull. Like yeah. Son of Dracula. He just likes the, the bike and the flames. Yeah. Yeah, here's another one because of Steve. Uh, <laughs> I never would have looked twice at this uh, book. You know, you, you, Charlton, you were saying you don't like the little com commercials on the bottom of the page. Sometimes they're really pretty funny when you see it's a cover showing death and destruction, and then there's a little happy, you know, <laughs> what a ticket to Disneyland. <laughs> yeah, bottom. I know. Ooh, yeah. I mean, it's, there's something, I don't know. Yeah, it's. <laughs> it's, it's my understanding. Yeah, that's man. one Jay Stevens I never yeah. got. I never saw it. It's he's Elvis. Going, it's he's Elvis. going wild right now from what I hear. It's Elvis. Elvis. It's Elvis. Well, um, okay, so what do you, how do you account for these explosions and in interest um, in different artists? Like, where did, how is it, someone was saying it's because there's a Netflix documentary yeah, or on yeah, some streaming Stevens. service. So that might account for Dave Stevens, why people are suddenly discovering him. Mm -hmm. Um, yep. All, all people are talking about is Matt Baker, and Matt Baker was absolutely great, but there's a lot of pinup artists. Is it because that Matt Baker still has un um, covers that people haven't discovered yet because they were for romance or Western comics? Is that why people are going nuts about him? 
Is it because it's virtue signaling? Well, I don't want to get into that, but <laughs> uh, I, I think Matt Baker, he he uh he's credited with uh creating the art of glamour. He glamorized, was able to glamorize women in a way no other artist did. So I oh I I, I think he's great, but I think there are other artists just as good in the golden age. Oh um, yeah, yeah, that's but it's just like that's all I hear on different streams. It's Matt Baker, Matt Baker, it's that Matt Baker, and it's that Matt Baker. It's just like so it's like, why is that the only guy anyone's talking about lately? But yeah, it's certain things, and now everyone's into pulps because they slab them now. Let's see, Gotham yep. says that Western show you guys put on last night was great. Can't wait till Westerns make a comeback in movies, shows, and comics. All right, because cool. he's got a bunch in his back room and wants to sell. Kevin, if you just got on <laughs> Didn't you have this cover in the book you were showing? I'm pretty sure you did. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, well, that's all I've got, Gretchen. All right. Uh, I got a, I got a Superboy with a Marvel character on it, J. Jonah Jameson. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> sure yeah. It's not. It's a little out of focus, though. Oh yeah, here. Let me get it out of the bag. This is uh, Neil Adams' cover. I think you you got a light bulb out or something, uh, or maybe it's maybe yeah. you're trying to be. Well, that you made it darker. <laughs> yeah, but this will show up better. Okay. Yeah, it's it's sort of. Yeah. Kind of like the Neil Adams man was. It's great. He had he had such a way of uh, putting emotion into the uh, characters' faces. Yeah. Well, anyway, yeah, uh, that's what, that's all I got here. Hey, Gratu, I've got uh, a few co Western comics that I grabbed real quick, just out of okay. box. Hey. I, uh, that's I what we're waiting for. I can't compete with you guys. I just have a few. Oh. All right, it's not a competition okay. thing, though. I know, but. Oh yeah, there you oh, go. That's, that's a great book. That's great. I've never seen that. Oh, there right. you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, what you've got is choice. That's that's great too. Chuck Connors. Mm -hmm. Johnny Crawford. There you go. Nice. The Western Batman and Robin. Batman and Robin of the West. There you go. Dr. Fives, you're going to show us the big wood uh, rifleman. Uh, <laughs> oh, that was a great TV show. Mm -hmm. I watched it a lot. It was. Oh, I've never seen that. Six Black Horses. I've never heard of the movie either. Mm. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, it's got Audie Murphy in it. This is uh, Audie Murphy down here. Oh, wow. Okay. Put that a little bit closer. Who, who, that guy looks familiar. No, oh, that, wow. that, this guy right there. Let's see. Let's get it. With, yeah, who is that? He he always played these mean, really mean yes. characters. Man, who is that? He's in a lot of film noir as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Audie Murphy, most decorated soldier in World War II. Yep. That, that wasn't Audie Murphy, though. What I was no on the bottom. Oh yeah. Hello, right. Yeah, the, the other wagon train was another great uh, TV show. Mm -hmm. I always watched as a kid with with my mom and dad. We watched it as a family. Yeah, it was a good show. Yeah. That's when you they know. still had family shows. You know, I mean, real family shows. And uh, this one doesn't really qualify. This is more of a kind of a. Jungle type, but still oh, has yeah. it. Indian. Taka. Very cool. That's it. Let's right. see. Six Black Horses is um, 1962, March 28, 1962. Let's look, let's look it up. Uh, okay, there we go. You got so, anybody waiting to come in the show or what? I don't think so. Um, hey, my, Meyer, uh, are you still there, my Meyer? friends in Dallas are having trouble getting in. Yeah, I'm here. 
They're having trouble getting in because of their Wi-Fi, not because of us. Oh. Quick question for Meyer. Hey, Meyer, you were talking earlier um, with Charlton on your uh, military background. Um, were you a medic when you were in the military? Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I, was a, I was a combat medic with the 82nd Airborne Division from 84 to 92. Nice. Interesting. Yeah, I was in, and I was in combat aviation the whole time in the air cavalry, and that's how our paths would have crossed because his the ship that Steve served on was a helicopter ship, um, like a kind of had was it like a like an aircraft carrier for helicopters. Steve, is that <clears throat> kind of what it's? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we would have uh, medics, military medics, uh, come and ride with us uh, in the city of Flint. And because uh, we had so much uh, shootings and stabbings, a lot of good trauma. So uh, yeah. it was kind of exciting having those guys with us on the med units and going to go different calls. Yeah, um, I had a, a really good time. Uh, one of my um, tours, I did a year in Seoul and I got to work in the emergency room at uh, Yongsan, the main army base in Seoul for an entire year. So it's like, wow. you know, they would embed us in a situation like that on purpose, just like what you're talking about, where they want you to learn something really quick, firsthand experience, you know, in a place that's busy. And so I did that for a year and it was an absolute blast. Probably one of the funnest years of my life was working in the emergency room in the ambulance section in Seoul. Wow. Yeah. You know, that adrenaline rush is, it's addictive. I mean, we went on, I couldn't even begin to count how many shootings I've been on. It's unbelievable. I mean, just shootings all the time. There were so many that we went on. But yeah, yeah, it was a lot of action. And it just, you know, you kind of feed off of that. Yeah, absolutely. Anyway, go ahead. I just was curious if, if you were a medic. Very cool. You know, I think yeah. you guys literally, I mean, you guys literally saved thousands of lives but when I look at what I did, I, I was saving lives, but not in that way, as far as getting them away from gangs and maybe becoming interested in nerdy Absolutely. stuff. Right. Or, or, you know, showing. Showing them a different path to go down. Yeah. Like, OK, all if all the only movies you've ever seen are what was what's that series that's been out for 20 years with the bald guy. Kochek. <laughs> no. the, the one about the cars being stolen. Uh, the bald guy, Vin Diesel. What's that called? Fast and the Furious. Fast and the Furious. If, if you've only seen Blood In, Blood Out, Fast and the Furious, and Friday about drug dealers, those are like the type of cinema you've been exposed to. And I would show them Singing in the Rain. <laughs> And, and they would get into it. I'd show them hairspray, and they would the the real hairspray, the John Waters one, not the terrible musical that they did. And it's like they would see the, this music and this the dancing that was so superior to the horrible stuff they were being infected mm. with in the two thousands, and they would love it. And it's like so. I mean, I was an English teacher, but I was exposing them to. All kinds of culture, the 1933 King Kong, these Edgar Rice Burroughs books, and the idea was to uh, kind of give them the same influence as I had and uh, let them see a different world. And, and what, and, and my theory, my premise is that this is all literature, it's all written. If it's written stories, it's literature, even if it's coming at you through the form of a movie or so. Uh, you know, and they're hearing people speak and they need to learn to speak, you know, English properly. And and uh, and so to me, it, it, it seemed to work because some of these kids became teachers. So but, awesome. you know, and, and and but then some of my most promising students, they wound up. Oh, this one girl was like driving the car during a drive by and some people were killed in a house. And then wow. years later, I see her at I'm at a vintage car show and there she is. And I say hi. And she says, well, I 
changed my life. I got her. I thought she would be a newscaster, you know, for local news or something. She was such a good writer. Oh, I was I was so proud of her. And then she just gets involved with, you know, the local gang, you know. It's like I mean, it's just like it's it's there you constantly beckoning them in and I was trying to give them another another way and some yeah, of them absolutely. some of them took it and some some didn't but that was my career, not as exciting as your. I mean, although there was some excitement, but sure. <laughs> and and no, education is important, you know. That yeah, especially the education that they're throwing around today. Right, absolutely, yeah. we see the effects of it now. Oh, horrible, yeah. horrible. Well, movie, man, but you know. Yeah, it's 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 something. It, we're it's an assault on our whole way of life. Is what's going on right now. It's yeah. yeah. And it was important to have good teachers like you, Gratu. I mean, that was, you know, vital. And, and all of us, all of us, I'm sure, can can remember and mention a teacher that had an influence on us. You know, that yeah, had some kind of impact. I, I do. 100%. I can name several. Yep. But, uh, increasingly, you get kind of flushed out, you know, by... Um, eh. <laughs> I think I turned out all right. You know, I went to Catholic school and all the nuns had to do, if he misbehaved or something or did any kind of stupid thing, you know, all they did, would do was just stare at you. <laughs> give you that stare and you go, oh, man, you know. You were, uh, well, My father yeah, went to Catholic school. Stiff. <laughs> he saw a nun punch a guy out. <laughs> I, wow. I was going to say, Hans, they didn't hit you at all. I, I thought that's what they did back in the day. Um, uh, I mean, the kid said something really nasty to the nun. <laughs> she just sucked him right in the jaw. <laughs> he saw some <laughs> colorful stuff. Um, <laughs> the worst thing I ever got was a wooden ruler on the hand a couple of times. Oh, I got that. That, yeah. was it. that was it. I might be, you know. They they would make the kids on the day after the last day of school, they would have to, you know, clean the school and polish the hardwood hard wood, wood floors and and so my uh father was the, the couple of the kids were alone in the classroom cleaning the floors and he and he, he knew that one of the kids in the class had been playing with like a toy grenade. This was during World War II. And the nun had taken it, the teacher had taken it, and just thrown it into her desk drawer. And he says, well, I'm going to go look at that. And, and he looked at it and stared at it and remembered. And then years later, he was in the arm, and he realized, you know, that was a live grenade. <laughs> Somehow this kid had. I don't know wow. if, if you could send a live grenade back to your kid brother from the war. I don't know. Or, <laughs> how do you, tell? You, you guys might be able to tell me how you tell a live grenade from a fake one. I, is there something? To, there must be some. Cause my father wouldn't make up stories. There must oh, be uh, some. If it was live, I would have had the pen in it. Well, usually also the, the fake ones are drilled out on the bottom. So yeah. they'll still have the pin and everything. So it looks like okay. a real grenade when you set it on a table uh -huh. for like, um, you know, displays. It looks great. But if you tip it upside down, you'll see that's been drilled out. Yeah. Okay. Well, it must not have been that. <laughs> yeah. And then one time there was this, uh, this kid was uh, playing with a rubber snake in class. And the nun just grabbed it and then put it in one of her big pockets, you know, they have in the nun outfit, whatever you call the nun uniform. Yeah. And and then she, she, apparently it wasn't a rubber snake. It was a real snake. And she just grabbed <laughs> it through her pocket. I and knew you were going to say that. Moving, yeah. And she reaches in and throws it against the wall. It sounded like a wild time he was having in Catholic school. <laughs> uh, I was going to Catholic like? school. So my my mother was Baptist. And my dad was Catholic, and um, he had an Irish Catholic mother, and uh, um, so um, my wife is very astute, Doctor Fives. And you know, when when you first appeared, she said, "Oh, he's he's of Spanish descent." And then I I saw your name on your plaque in your office, and I said, "She was right." Yeah. So, are, 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 of what country is your heritage? So, uh, my on my father's side, uh, my grandparents uh, both were from Mexico, 
And okay. um, yeah, in fact, uh, my great grandfather was an artist in Mexico and uh, wow. did a lot of paintings and did uh, paintings in several of the uh, churches. Some of those are wow. still, uh, yeah, my uncle uh, went down and took some pictures of some of them. Some of them are still, you know, the paintings still exist. Most of them they don't. But, um, and my father, the, father was, you, was a good artist, but he uh, went down a different path. He didn't uh, do that. He uh, he was the black sheep of the family. Uh-oh. Yeah, yeah, he wasn't, uh, he was not a good egg. And, uh, <laughs> but luckily I had great grandparents and uh, great aunts and uncles. And uh, they all were uh, very successful and did well. And yeah, unfortunately my father was, was the one that uh, chose a life of crime. Oh, do you do you have pictures of those paintings in Mexico that you could put on Instagram or something? Or? I don't. Um, in fact, I've been trying to get some from my uncle. And, uh, you know, it's one of those, oh, I'll find them. I'll get, you know, I've got to find them. And it's been years that I've been bugging about it. Yeah. yeah. I, would, I would love to see them. Yeah. Someone in my, um, on my dad's side, the, apparently my my grandfather, my dad's dad, was a professional baseball player. And, and his wife, my grandmother, kept a big scrapbook. And that was handed down to my, – my dad had so many brothers and sisters, and then they had so many children. It's just like I've never met all of them. And I don't know to what kid that big scrapbook was handed down to. i got to feed the dog again, it looks like. But I, that would my dad was always wondering where that scrapbook went. But anyway, yeah, my uh, my my grandfather was a, a pitcher, uh, Philip Lefty Weiner, that played for the Yankees and the Phillies and the Cubs. And anyway, but uh, Man, he was most great famous for that, he was most book. famous for punching out Casey Stengel, <laughs> who apparently was not like liked very well because the police said to my my uh grandfather do you want us to take him under the sands and finish the job <laughs> but uh i'm gonna run to feed her again because she's crying oh yeah we but heard you it. guys can chat chit chat yeah my my wife is so astute i don't know it's like how do you know do you, do you speak spanish uh very little uh, I, okay. I used to when I was a kid a lot more and uh, and then being away from it um, I yeah when I was in spent time in Argentina it started coming back to me and uh -huh. being submerged I was actually in Argentina for a little over a month uh, helping train firefighters down there oh yeah you told us yeah yeah that was an interesting experience spent time in Buenos Aires and all the different little cities I was fascinated by your story about um danzig <laughs> oh yeah oh yeah, and that's guys. speaking of 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 something important like captain strange life has letters written by steve ditko which is important historical stuff meyer has um talked for hours with edgar rice burroughs grandson and would you like to share this story because he was telling me this through text and phone calls and it's like could you sort of mesh together that whole story and, and, and regale us with that story? And I'll be listening while I feed the dog. Or, do you mind? Yeah, sure. Let me no, give you mind. a full stage because that was one of the I, – I was planning to be the highlights of tonight is, is hearing about Danton Burroughs. All right, go ahead. So um, I guess we'll, we'll start, uh, I guess, at the beginning or um, – if I would have known this, I would have brought my popcorn down here, man. <laughs> How it happened, what happened. So uh, <clears throat> early 2000s, um, I was living with this woman, and uh, uh, we were a couple, but we weren't married. Uh, and we were spending a lot of time. We, we spent a lot of time in the backyard reading. And uh, after about a year, and she had a really nice backyard, a very nice swimming pool and cabana and the whole setup. We kind of just spent all our time off work in the backyard reading. And so after about a year, I moved stuff out of storage. And some of that stuff was a box of books and uh, some comic books. She was like, what is this trash kind of like thing? Cause I was pulling out my 
Edgar Rice Burroughs Tarzan books and rereading them for the first time in maybe 15 or 20 years and things like that. And she was reading things that were a little bit heftier than that. And uh, so eventually, I don't know how it happened. Maybe she said, what is this trash a, a second or third time? And I said, actually, this is really good. Check this out. Let me explain it to you. And so she read the first two Tarzan books. Um, she read Beyond the Farthest Star. She mm. read um, Princess of Mars, The Cave Girl, maybe another Tarzan book or two, all over like a span of about eight or nine months. And this is in Southern California where the weather is warm. So we're by the pool all the time. I was working construction and she's an attorney. And so she's this person who's really good on the telephone. And she's also a person who uh, I would say the type of person who says, if you, if you, you don't know until you ask whether the question is going to be yes or no. So un unbeknownst to me, the idea for her was to call Tarzana and to speak to somebody who's in charge of the borough's estate and for us to go there for my birthday and maybe get a tour of the grounds or something, something like that. This is like months in advance of my birthday. And it was just an idea that she had, but Danton Burroughs called her back personally on the phone. Uh, she called his office. She didn't know that he even existed. And it ended up that she left the message there and he called her back and they became friends over the phone before I ever talked to him because the idea was there was this surprise that they were planning. And that, so I heard about their conversation after the next thing that happened is what happened. So they became friends enough after a month or two that she felt like she couldn't keep the surprise from me anymore. So one day we're out at the pool, the phone rings and she says, there's somebody on the phone for you. And I, I'm like, who is it? And I, and I say, hello. And he says, uh, this is Danton Bur. Maybe he said, this is Danton Burroughs, the grandson of your favorite author, right? Because <laughs> Jennifer had told him everything as a setup. He, she had told him all about how she had read the books through me and how much she loved and appreciated the books. And she wouldn't have thought that she would have appreciated them, but she told him how well written they were. And she understood how I had this connection. She told him about my connection and my history with Tarzan and, and the books. So he already knew about me and it was like a surprise. So we talked for a long time, the first time, probably an hour about just me and about what the books had meant to me and he told me a little bit about growing up at Tarzana he told me other personal stuff that they that Jen and him had been talking about and then they kept talking another conversation happened where he called back and we talked some more most of that was about now it went from me from us going down there for a little walk around tour to us coming down and him hosting us for a lunch at the ranch and who knows what, it felt like we were becoming really good friends, even though I've just talked to him two times, I know that my girlfriend is actually good friends with him and she calls him while she's at work or he calls her and things like that. And um, then before any of this can happen, uh, there's a fire at Tarzana and he dies of a heart attack. So I oh, never got to meet him in man. person, we never got wow. to go. And the other thing was is that uh, that last the last conversation that I had with him, we were talking about the house and we were and he was telling me about his collection. He was telling me about all the art. He was telling me about all the original art pieces and uh, sculptures and paintings and man. things that have come over the years from all these different artists, not only his family members that were also all, many of them were talented artists that painted his grandfather's or drew his grandfather's <laughs> work, um, his father included. and. It was like this long family history and he was telling me about all this stuff and he says dave when you come you can pick something is what he told me and i said oh, no, what no. You he's like he's like i have something i've got an idea for you i've got a gift for you for your birthday and i and i was like really you know touched and but also kind of you know thrown aback a little bit wow he also talked about the dumb dumb a little so there's also more to this as i'm talking more and more is coming up so here's what i got from danton when we were talking to him he was a little bit lonely and maybe the, the the fans had died down a little bit as far as fans that were reaching out. The mm -hmm. original Dum Dum crowd had maybe dropped down to not as many people and it wasn't 
he was saying at the beginning, he said, or I don't know, the beginning, when he was a kid or when he was a teenager, maybe in the 50s or the 60s, he experienced groups of fans all coming together at these Dum Dum conferences. And he and he talked to him and told me about that. But it was like he wasn't used to having a or he wasn't used to having a fan call him directly and make friends with him and talk and, uh, and and talk about. I was just talking about everything that his grandfather's books had done for me as a kid because I had a real deep connection to Tarzan as a kid. When I was a kid, my father died in this tragic surprise. Like it's, they're always tragic and it's always a surprise. My, my father died in this helicopter crash, like suddenly when I was four. But in addition to that, my mother was kind of detached and she was busy with other things. So I fantasized and dreamed about being an orphan and like I wanted to be an orphan. The ultimate orphan was Tarzan, right? So I immediately locked on to that. This was the guy who had conquered the world on his own. And that was the connection for me with Tarzan. So I played Tarzan in my backyard, in my swimming pool, my whole childhood, all by myself in my head, diving in and out of the pool, wrestling around in the water, fighting sharks or tigers. or, or <laughs> I must have looked like a complete... If my mother had been looking out the window, if she had been looking out the window, she would have seen me flopping around all by myself in the water. <laughs> <laughs> so I told Danton this stuff, and this, I think, touched him and ingratiated us to him. In addition, he and Jennifer had a connection that had to do with, with their own personal stuff, and and, uh, and they got along really well, and that was kind of it. Mm, wow. I, and I come, I'm home from work early because I was working construction, so I would go to work at like 5.30 in the morning and get home at like 3 in the afternoon, but it's still like 100 degrees outside, so I'd be at the pool but she had office hours and stuff and she'd get home at work at like five, five thirty, And she was like, I got bad news. And uh, Danton's secretary had called her because she was at the top of the list, I guess. Wow. It? It's all so bitter. Bitter. sweet to hear. Oh, you. unbelievable. Yeah. It's really sad. Um, another thing I asked him because I really had never been to Tarzana. So I didn't know in my mind, I always kind of fantasized that this was a town that would be dedicated to Tarzan. Right. So I thought that maybe on the street signs, there'd be little silhouettes of Tarzan next to the street names, or maybe the mm -hmm. high school team is called the Lords of the Jungle or something like that. <laughs> but but uh, there is nothing, you know, I asked Dan, wow. I said, isn't there like something like big, like, isn't the town connected to your, to, to your grandfather and Tarzan? He said, not really. That's Jeez. so strange, man, but. Wow. That's it. Yeah. Thanks for the story, man. That's yeah. awesome. I mean, yeah, excellent. Great story, but it's sad it happened, you know. Bittersweet, so but uh, really great. One more thing. So, be while this was happening, part of Jen's surprise mm -hmm. to me was she made these packets for me. Okay, remember she had an office and and she so the she was preparing me for the trip. So she made these. This first one is a packet that is just the uh all about their family about danton and his siblings and his parents and then mm. this is the danton burroughs family archive she printed all this out for me because she wanted me to read all this obviously before we went so that i would be all ready <laughs> and the dates on them when she printed this out it was september 2006. Hmm. So did Danton have any children? Yes. Yes, I think he's got a couple children. Uh, I think that that might be who's in control of the estate now. I think he might have two daughters. Okay. Wow. That's something. Mm, very well, sad. Fire. What happened with the fire? Did that fire completely destroy the property that he... No, not at all. So he was only 63 and the fire itself wasn't even at one of the main buildings. It was like an, at an, in an, in like an out structure. And mm -hmm. the, the worst part of it was that the fire was controlled easily, but Danton ran out into there. And that's when he had like an event, a cardiac event. And then I think wow. he passed away. Oh, through probably the stress of the fire. Huh? Yeah. And the oh. heat. Also, there's, yeah. there, you know, it was very hot. I think it's always hot down there, and that's possible. Hmm. Wow. Change wow. of temperature from inside the house and running outside. Man. Hmm. Hmm. Well, 
That is so really can, too bad that that the happened. You didn't, you know. There are pictures in here that we can look at. Yeah. Some great memories, though, man. It's just mm -hmm. wonderful memories of that. This is this is Danton holding up a painting from the house, and that's a painting of him that was done by his father, I think, when he was a baby. Wow. Here's Danton's parents, it's his mother and father. Mm. Oh, that's zoom in on that picture on the right. I stole that. You sent me a, a picture of this page, and I stole that picture and put it on Instagram. It's so great. That's Posing Danton Burroughs. Yeah, that's his mother. And that's his <laughs> father right there sitting at the table. That's so great. Here's a bunch of pictures of the kids at Tarzana at the ranch when they were kids. Amazing. Here's a picture of Danton holding a big sword. <laughs> like what Higgy Pop uses to open his AOK packages. <laughs> There's a neat picture of ERB and the and the grandkids. Wow. Oh, you know what's in here? I I want to read this. I want to take a, a second to read this. So there's a letter in here, and it's a letter from Edgar Rice Burroughs to Danton Burroughs when he was born, like when he was a baby, okay? Oh. It, it, can I read that real quick, Gratu? Of course, yeah. So it's dated. It's dated June twenty second, nineteen forty four, and it says, "Dear Danton, just two years ago today, your brother arrived when our world did not look too bright, but you come in on the crest of a of a victorious wave that is carrying us and our allies to successful ending of World War II much sooner than we expected." If your generation shows more intelligence than past generations, perhaps there will be no more wars. But that is almost too much to expect. However, there is a chance. You have been born into the greatest nation the world has ever known. Keep it great. Keep it strong. If you do, no country will dare to go to war if we say no. Put this letter away and read it. June 21st, 1965. You will be of age then. See then if the politicians have kept your country great and, and strong. Wow. If they haven't, do something about it. If I'm around, I'll remind you. Good luck, my boy. Your grandfather, Edgar Rice Burroughs. Wow. Cool. And my 1965 LBJ was starting to destroy. <laughs> Wouldn't you think <laughs> LBJ is kind of what destroyed Detroit, or did it start earlier than that? What do you think? You no, know, you're right. Once the riots hit, that was it. That was the nail in the coffin. When the riots happened, um, there was the white flight. Everybody. Well, left. but it's 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 writing into law where it will give you government money, but you got to get the father out of the household to get the money, and then it, it destroys whole communities. And, and yes, it, yeah, the whole welfare system what? is completely broken. I mean, it makes no sense that. To be on welfare, you cannot make any money. So, therefore, it tells you, basically, you need to stay unemployed. And then the more kids you have, the more money you make. So, again, it's supposed to be a, a hand up, right? You're supposed to just be on it for a short time. It helps you out until you do find employment. Um, but it's not set up that way. It's it's set up, for obviously, to yeah. keep people down and make people completely, you know, reliant on the government. Mm -hmm. And yeah. that's what they're doing. It's been generation after generation. Yeah. Hey, Gratu, I got to sign oh. off. My uh, my wife watches on uh, Thursdays her 93-year-old uh, mother, and then she gets home here about 8.30 oh. Denver time, and so I'm going to start heating up some dinner. Dr. Fox, I'll tell you, you said something interesting, though. My wife is Hispanic, and, uh, you know, she was born in 56, I think it was, and her, her parents speak, you know, fluent um, – uh, Spanish, but the interesting thing is, is that she uh, doesn't speak any Spanish. And the sad thing is, and, and and maybe this has something to do with, you know, you, you can chime in on, but back then um, it was frowned upon, I think, you know, to be Hispanic. 
And uh, her parents didn't want their children to be able to speak Spanish. They wanted them to be American. So Oliver, her, she has two sisters, and none of them can speak Spanish, even though her parents are fluent in it. It's kind of sad. That, that used to be the way with all immigrants, it seems yeah. like, 100 yes. years ago. Just they wanted to forget everything from their other country. Yeah, yeah. So Yeah, same with my family as well. Yeah, my uh, my parents, um, my father and all of my aunts and uncles, they are bilingual. And um, it was important for my uh, my grandmother. She wanted them to be bilingual, but she yeah. wanted them to speak very good English. That was very important to her. And she also um, made it to where if people were in the house that didn't speak Spanish, it was important and a rule that you do not speak Spanish in front of English speaking people. Right, because it was rude, and uh, so yeah, they they had certain rules all about it, and yeah, uh, yeah. So, all righty, guys, we'll have a good evening. Take all care, right, man. Take care. Take care. Take care. Take care. In. All right, see ya. Thanks for dropping in, Dave. No problem. Okay, so if any, anyone wants to come in, we've got an available spot. Let me put the link in the chat. Uh, <clears throat> some people. Yeah, well, the thing is, I want to get some new blood in here, too. And Dr. Fibes, just look at the background. <laughs> My God. Dr. I mean, Fibes. Well, uh, what, are the, what did they, uh, that crazy detective in the movie, uh, The Return of Dr. Fibes, he kept on referring to Dr. Fibes as Dr. Phoebe's or something? Did you ever see that movie? Of course. Yes. <laughs> you must have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have. I, I, both of them. I, I like to, you know, it's funny because uh, um, it, it's probably, not, definitely is not my favorite Vincent Price film. I would say it's probably in the top five yeah. of my favorite Vincent Price films. Um, but uh, when I was trying to come up with a name, I, I was just, you know, trying to, I, I don't know, I was looking all over the place for a name. And then uh, I just happened to, uh, see um an ad for this dvd that was being released on blu-ray and um so because they've they've they're re-releasing and uh so i thought hey dr fives that's it that's what i'm going to go with yeah. so that's why i chose that but no i have i have uh all of vincent price's movies i i'm a big fan but i'm a big fan of horror and sci-fi i love yeah, um, me too. both and I, I love a lot of the old well, classic. Do myself, yeah. and, and all of us, I know, you know, we all love, I love <laughs> the old westerns and, and the film noir and pretty much any type of old film um, yeah. I'm, a, I'm a fan of. But yeah, definitely sci fi and horror are, are my favorite. And that's, it's the old stuff that I love. I'm not mm -hmm. really into the new stuff. When I saw that, uh, when I saw Dr. Fives and Return of Dr. Fives, when I saw that in the, the movie theater, I thought it was so funny that the one detective kept on referring to him the wrong way. You know, and he, was being corrupted yeah. all the time, you know. Oh yeah, the film is definitely very campy and has yeah. a lot of campy humor in it, and uh, well, and it was a lot of fun for Vincent Price to make. Yeah, everybody loved making that movie. They said it was a blast, and it comes across in the film too. Hans, when when you saw the stream and saw Doctor Fives for the first time, uh, this Doctor Fives, not the Vincent Price. When you saw his house for the first, how did you react? Because I can tell you how we and 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 Kevin at Gotham City, Kevin said I got about half an hour's sleep that night. Yeah, <laughs> and, I saw and, and I went. I, my wife, I, I immediately showed her that part of the stream, and she, <laughs> you know, she, you know, she's well, not into all this stuff, but she was amazed. And well, thanks, you uh, guys. I'm flattered. And, and yeah, I, I, I think I had. I was at work with maybe an hour and a half sleep. Well, that kind of inspired me to get on the move here, you know, to get things rolling quicker, to get that other house sold and then start looking for a bigger house. And, you know, we're planning ahead now because, because I want to get my posters up on the wall like this guy has, man. Yeah, what, what I can think of, I got all these posters and I can't even put them nowhere. He's got well, them on well, the wall, you know, nice frames and everything, and I can't put them nowhere. Well, that's going to be epic when your collection yeah. blows up and is visible instead of because I always joke that it's like that EC story blind blind alleys with the few episodes where you show yourself walking down <laughs> between the boxes. Oh, it just yeah. reminds me of that guy trying to 
missed the razor blades. Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That was yeah. Uh, I remember <laughs> that. With but the, yeah, it's gonna be great. It's gonna be epic. Uh, how many square feet do you think you need to do that? Probably at least as almost as much as you, but well, I'm not gonna be able to afford that though, unless I find something. You know, well, we can't go. The stairs are just so, uh, is bad for us. It's, you just get a beat up house that's about to fall over, like us, and then you. <laughs> Well, your house ain't falling over, man. You got a pretty good house. Are you kidding me? Well, I mean, it's it's not in the best condition, but but yeah, we have over six thousand square foot. But I've run out of room for. I still have posters stacked this high. I, that's like I want to put up the green slime poster. And I'm thinking where and then how am I going to get it framed? And I think, well, I love maybe I could just put it up with thumbtacks. I mean, how much longer am I going to live? <laughs> I, 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 I can't look at my green slime poster because I'm afraid of putting tackles in it. And, and it's like, I'd rather look at it before I go blind. <laughs> I don't know, man. It's, <laughs> it's like I'm so worried about, you know, those DVDRs you're recording constantly from YouTube. They're going to go bad in 50 years. Oh, no, that's terrible. I start worrying about it. Like, well, I'm not going to be here in 50 years. But yeah. then, you know, it's like, well, well, you know, the problem historically, but I don't have any children, so I don't even know what I'm thinking. Somehow we think we're all immortal. It's yeah. Like, I'm not going to complete run of that comic. Why? Man, I just, <laughs> for, for Cleo you know, to. All of us collectors have that problem. You know, yeah. I, mean, I don't understand. I'm not trying to get morbid or anything. But, but, but that's how honest, everyone, everyone that is not, you know, we're having all this financial problems and, and my wife's friends on the phone with him. Is he ever going to sell those comics? <laughs> it's like, uh, no. And then it's like, well, what about your <laughs> level attacks? He's like, uh, thanks. Thanks. You're really helping out. <laughs> well, you know, I, I made a conscious decision to pretty much stop collecting posters uh, because of the fact that uh, I've got I've got them on display. I love seeing them. I love enjoying them. Yeah. But I don't have any more room, really. Yeah. So yeah. I will put a few. Like I'm going to get a few lobby cards framed. If I were to come across a certain poster that I really love, then I probably would swap one out. You know, I I would buy that if I could get a really good deal on it, mm -hmm. and then probably take one of mine down and replace it. But for the most part, I have a friend who is a retired police officer who's got the most unbelievable collection of movie posters and memorabilia. In fact, I, I need to go to his place and film it because it's just unbelievable. He's got hundreds and hundreds of really rare posters that he has in books. And because he's he has no room, his his wife does not want any of the posters oh. in the house other than the basement. And he's got a finished basement. He's got a beautiful home. <laughs> it sounds that, like my that, wife. Yeah, just literally, that's all he has is the basement. And he's got this massive big house, but he's only got so much room. So everything's in booklets. And you can go through and just go page after page looking at these posters. I, I don't want to do that. I just don't want to have my posters all shoved in a in a folder somewhere. So I don't really collect posters that much anymore. Like I say, unless I were to come across something that was a really good deal, for the most part, I'm not actively collecting those. Well, you can always put them on a ceiling like Gratu does. <laughs> well, that was at my old house. But um, although I did, he did. But seriously, there is another way to do it. There used to be this comic shop or, and poster shop. Well, there was more than one poster shop back in the old days in Dallas, and they and and I would get the the materials from them. It's a big piece of cardboard the size of a one sheet and a plastic bag. And it's just like you're putting a comic book into a plastic, but yes, yeah. then you can flip through them and you can put a poster on either side of the cardboard and then you can Ooh. flip through and see your posters unfolded, you know, and flat. Um, yes. I, I know exactly even, what you're talking about. Um, There's also yeah, the big it's just like a giant lady. comic bag for posters, but I've never heard of them lately. Oh, yes. Meyer. What were you saying? Oh, Meyer? I was I gonna say you, also, you wanted to say something. Large, I was gonna say there's also the the you know the large vintage poster displays that used to be like you know on the wall with the books and you know but they're mm -hmm. posters and you can flip through them. Yeah. You know what yeah. I'm talking about the black ones that the posters fit inside of. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. You know. Yeah. 
that they would sell at like head shops or record stores. Remember how yeah. they display the posters? Yeah, that exactly. Way. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I remember that. And then there's always, always lobby cards, you know, and window cards that don't take as, up as much space. But, you know, it just, uh, that's an expensive hobby. My friend it Tom is. had a huge collection of posters. I've never seen a collection like that. And then uh, there was another dealer, a post, you know, Ed, Ed Neal that played the hitchhiker in Texas Chainsaw Massacre that cut his hand. <laughs> He's a major poster dealer. And, and he they were friends. And oh, that's through, interesting. It was through him that he bought the actual dead grandmother sculpture and the chair she sat in from the original movie that he had in his living room. And, um, but uh, yeah, he had a huge collection. In fact, when I first met him in college and I'd call him, I'd get his answering machine. This is like 1984. I'd call him up and there'd be Dr. Fives would talk and he would say, nine killed. <laughs> nine shall die <laughs> and then his father was a retired dentist but like an important dentist in the community he was the dentist of the entire texas rangers football team they all went to him he was like an important person in in the community and he collected art he had norman rockwell paintings all over the house and remingtons and all this western art and and uh, it was through the father he had taken tom to movies when he was young and all the James Bond movies and Westerns. And that's how he learned to love movies. But, but the, the, sometimes people would call the dad, even though he was a retired dentist, you know, they would call him about things. And, and Tom's number was one digit off from his dad's dental number. And so sometimes, <laughs> and the mother got so mad they're calling and they're getting Dr. Fives. And they think they're calling your dad. <laughs> and that was, they had another message. He and a friend recorded this incredibly profane song about why Tom couldn't pick up the phone <laughs> with all the curse words. And that really set his mom off. About that. Oh, I bet. And his, and, and his mom was related to uh, Tex Ritter. So, um, wow, yeah, yeah, and she used to write jokes for John Johnny Carson and laughing. So okay. she was connected. <laughs> I mean, she was a housewife, but she was writing jokes for Johnny Carson. I don't know exactly. And she was friends with Sandy Dennis. Let's get Sandy the name Sandy Duncan and Dennis mixed up. But it was Sandy Den Dennis was the more serious actress. I believe that was in up the down staircase. That's mm -hmm. the best movie about teaching in an inner city. And I think it's on YouTube now. It's somewhere I saw the other day that it's available uh, to watch. Ooh. Better than the blackboard jungle. What, what year yeah, was that? Made? More realistic blackboard jungle. <laughs> it was like, a, well, that was a pretty, uh, yeah. I, I mean, I don't know what it was like in the film, 50s. I think. Um, I mean, we have this picture in our mind of the 50s juvenile delinquents as being yeah. like Fonzie or Eric Von Zipper or Danny Zucco. In reality, <laughs> it was pretty bad. And that's another case of, you know, when there isn't a dad present, uh, bad things can happen to kids. Uh, and 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 that was, Absolutely. you know, they you know, there were a lot of dads that didn't come home in World War II. And so and, and a lot of them came back, but had heavy alcohol problems you know yep. there were a lot of ward cleavers that <laughs> in fact i look at all these these dad kind of magazines like time and newsweek from that time period every single ad is for jim beam and whiskey yeah. it was just like Thanks because you know and it's like I, I think you know just sociologically okay this generation was into this crazy you know big band music and jumping and flipping over each other and then after the war everything calmed down and then it's like they're listening to Mantovani and this exotica martin denny music so calm and it was just because they came back they, they were shell-shocked as frick and they just they mm -hmm. let me just be calm you know <laughs> And then the rock and roll music started up. And it's like, turn that shit down. You know? <laughs> yeah. 
but but in but the, that's the reason you, these corny movies, they say, well, look at these corny movies from the 50s. They show on Night Flight where they teach kids how to act in line in the cafeteria and how to wash their hands. Those movies existed because they didn't have dads. A lot of, not all the kids, they were, um, you know, it's, they, some of them, you know, pretty messed up. But that's mm -hmm. kind of forgotten. Um it's, there is a, I, and, I, and it, what was really interesting when they had the hundredth anniversary of the school I used to work at, and all of these these guys would show up that were there in the fifties, and I heard all these great stories and about what the school was like with the sock ops and um, that they bring a jukebox in, and it just was, sounded so great. But uh, a different era, you know. It's yeah. But, you know, it's like one of the guys was saying, you know, he um, he was reading a book about the Bataan Death March and he was looking at the photographs and they said, that looks like our math teacher. And they they went up to him and said, is this is this you? And and he looked at him. It was him. Mm. <laughs> he was like he's like he didn't even say a word because the guys that didn't talk about it were the ones that saw things and the ones that spun all these colorful stories they, they didn't do squat but, you know I, I may that may be a cliche but it seems like that's my dad never really talked about i i read later about how he rescued all these guys got them up in a helicopter and got some kind of metal that i've got downstairs but um then this all this accommodation not accommodation, commendation letter, you know, all that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, he never, he didn't brag about that stuff. No. And, and and my friend Tom, you know, was kind of uncouth a little bit. We were at dinner after some convention and Ed Neal was there, the hitchhiker from Texas Chainsaw Massacre. He says, come on, tell us about Vietnam. And he says, no, Tom, I don't want to talk about that. It's, it's like, you, you know. I worked uh, with uh, a lot of uh Korean and Vietnam vets. Of course, you know, most of those guys, they came back and they got government jobs. They became mail carriers. They uh, became police officers and firefighters. And um, so when I hired on the fire department in 1984, uh, there was a lot. I mean, almost everybody was a veteran. And um, it was it was a completely different department then. It was a much better department. And uh, as things changed through the years, um, politics and a lot of other things kind of took over and it just uh went downhill but but yeah it was uh great working with a lot of those guys mm -hmm. so they squeezed everyone out with the threat that they just weren't going to get retirement is that what i'm gathering for what you're telling us yeah it was just a lot of uh, mismanagement uh flint is just a mini detroit so like in detroit um where they uh you know mismanaged and lots of money was was uh missing so yeah, that's the state Lord. came in and took over. They literally got they fired our mayor, and um, and the state took over. So I see uh, Gotham City's got some cool looking eyes or something. <laughs> it's creepy. Yeah, really cool. Uh, my wife is saying my dad was a merchant marine in Korea, and he was only uh, he was on the only ship that wasn't blown up in that fleet. Wow. Uh -huh. Yeah. My wife's dad was like older than us when he had her so i think he was born before world war one I. I think he was in world war ii and korea if i'm not he was um much much older you know he had a younger wife and much what's going on there in gotham city there oh man let's see oh have have you seen dr fibes his creep show ticket booth i have it's amazing yeah <laughs> i thought it's incredible yeah. and my wife is saying he was so lucky because his brother also survived on that ship wow. 1915 is when he was born <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> that's years, my insane, man. um not not your decorations that's perfectly okay it's just that my wife's dad was born in 1915 um and she's 13 years younger than me, that's, um, 
you know what? We should all decorate our houses for Christmas and keep it that way all year. And then every Thursday have all our Christmas. What well, you I got probably a Christmas think I'm saying, uh, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> it would just be funny that every Thursday we're celebrating Christmas. I, I got a little Christmas tree upstairs. I always just got lights on it. It's always lit, you know. And I, I got Christmas uh, decorations over my oh, art that goes from the back porch into the kitchen, where I got need, some of my movie posters. That's always you up. need. You need to do more, like in your early days of your show. You used to go upstairs into some rooms. Yeah, you should do that again, or or no? Yeah, I want to, but I. I I'd like to get the the upstairs finished a little bit more. Once once this other house is is done with, then I'll have the time to get the back porch done. And I can I, I can I can have the walls finished where I can put the posters up, and then I'm gonna do yeah, some. Aren't you about stuff. to move? Maybe you should buy another place and then fix that up. Well, I'm I'm gonna be here in this house at least another year. I'm pretty oh, sure. Okay. Because it's gonna take some time to find a place. I mean, yeah. Where are you looking now? Did you give up on what? Iowa? No, I I didn't give up on Iowa. She's what she's looking at west of uh, Dubuque, actually. Some small towns west of Dubuque is what she's thinking of. Okay, but, uh, I don't, that's that like there. That's pretty far up uh, north from where you're at, though. Okay. Captain, you're in Chicago, right? In the Chicago. Yeah. yeah. So I'd be going west, but also north to Dubuque. That's kind of northwest, I think. What sub Chicago. area of Chicago? Pardon me? What area of Chicago are you in? Oh, I'm on the northwest side. Oh, okay. And then, then I got another house in Lincoln Square on the north side, but I, that's being sold right now. Hopefully. I guess my oh. wife's on a break right now because she's typing. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. <laughs> she's complimenting your digs. Yeah, I'm sorry, okay. I didn't so, mean to interrupt you guys. Oh, that's okay. Mm -hmm. Um, so did you go to a pretty rough school, Cap? Yeah. No, in, actually, in uh, I went to uh, when I was uh, going in, uh, uh, growing up, going to grammar school. It, it was there were public schools. I went to Autobahn, and we didn't have any problems like you know they do today. I mean, not at all. This is in the late fifties, early sixties, and yeah, then by sixty uh, sixty three, I uh, started going to. Uh, I transferred from public school to a uh, Catholic grammar school. And then I went to a Catholic uh, high school. We, uh, nice. It just sounds like the whole country has disintegrated since about the time that Kennedy was assassinated. Oh, that was. I mean, yeah, yeah, I, Chicago was, was oh, I always thought it was a wonderful place, but it had, as a kid, I thought it was a wonderful place, but it was, I knew that there was the gangster element from, you know, the, the roaring 20s, but, yeah. it, you know, and I knew that it had a lot of wind. But I didn't think of it as like a war zone, like it is depicted now. Or so it was I still think, pretty, pretty decent in the seventies and in the eighties. But it was already it was in decline at that time. But it, it really went to hell in the nineties and the twenties. Man, it just to the point. I used to I used to love living in a city in the sixties and the seventies uh, and even up to the eighties. You know, but after that, I developed in the 90s a love-hate relationship, and by the 20s, it was just hate. I said, I got to get out of here. I don't, I, I don't like this at all. It's weird to call it the 20s because I can't process that. I still think the other 20s. Yeah, so. right. I, I, it's just awful, man. I mean, you can't even – you can't – when I – in the late 50s, well, we would leave the house. A lot of times, we leave the doors unlocked. There was never a problem. And that yeah, it's, impossible it's still that way here, but it could change on a dime. I guess it could yeah. change anywhere. Uh, I you know. Today, I went, to the, I went to the bank today, you guys, in San Francisco, in my neighborhood. I went to the bank, and I went to open the door, and and it was locked. And I look, and I'm like, it's after ten. Why is it locked? 
and an armed security guard opens the door from the inside for me and lets me in. And I go, are you guys not open? And he goes, no, we're open, sir. We just need to keep the door locked at all times now. Yeah. And I was like, okay. That's to and I just stood in line and I watched him let everybody in person by person and they keep the entire bank locked down. Well, he, he was wearing, he was wearing a flat jacket also. He was wearing he was wearing a bulletproof vest. Holy in a nice God. neighborhood in San Francisco. Yeah, that's that's our America yeah. now. Yeah. You know, yeah. in Flint, yeah. it's been like that forever. I hated school. It was a rough uh, inner city school that I went to, and literally fast food restaurants in the area I worked are set up like a bank where you have plexiglass. And when you would go into Burger King or McDonald's, you would have to go and pay your, your money and stick it underneath the plexiglass. And then they would have a little rotation thing where they'd put your food and then rotate it and you would open it up. I mean, this that's was fast horrible. food. That's, and that's been like that since the 80s. Yep. Wow. That's incredible. Um, well, it's a, it's a Steady degradation of society, and we've watched it all happen. Yeah, for our mm -hmm. yeah, and, like it's all, and it was all intentionally plan. done to bring us down. And so, um, I just <laughs> um, you know, there's a mall not far from where I live. You know, it's called the Harlem and Irving Mall, the Hip. And for the first time, this is about three weeks ago. They had a smash and grab. They never had any kind of a problem there before. And this was a jewelry store. And these three young scholars, I guess I'll call them, from the south side or wherever they came from, they just walked in there, broad daylight, and busted all as many as the uh, jewelry uh, cases as they could, took the stuff out, put it in bags, and just walked out. Yeah, no fear. Nothing, man. And no, police can't do anything. They get released if they do get. That caught. never happened there before, and that this is up on you know still in Norwich, suburb of Norwich, which is you know pretty, uh, pretty clean and nice, and the cops are always around, you know, and it's, it's just. Well, watch what happens if you know they keep threatening to throw Trump in in jail if he keeps saying. Well, that's all. If, if they throw him in jail. <laughs> they just don't. Everything they do, just that's the only way they think they're going to stop him. They they want to stop him. They're not going to stop him by throwing him in jail. They're just everything they do makes him stronger. Mm -hmm. It's really, it's really kind of funny. It's, it's really like we're living in some great um, movie of. I mean, like uh, almost surreal. Like we're in a Kubrick movie or something. It's like it's it's so surreal. Yeah, surreal and and uh, Escape New York. <laughs> I just like and uh, you know I, I I just can't if every time there's a Trump rally to me that's as exciting as the Super Bowl is to some people or. WrestleMania, I just, I just can't wait to watch it. I, I'll watch it all day. <laughs> People might think I'm insane, but I, I, wonder, I wonder what would happen if they do if something happens and they do say sentence and sentence sentence him to like I, I don't know a couple of years or he gets thirty days or I don't know what what would happen then if he's in jail? Is he still allowed to run? Um, I, I, um, if, if they do that, there. <laughs> I just don't even. It might be a civil they, war if that happens. Well, yeah, we probably shouldn't talk about that on YouTube. But yeah, you're right. They want you're that right. to happen. Right. They're, they're talking about Obama this. put out a movie last week, I think, called that title. Yeah, I mean, that, that's they're trying to push people into it. They want us to be angry. The thing yeah. is to stay yeah. calm and laugh at it because it's really <laughs> hilarious. And all they're doing is making people love him, and they and they don't understand. Wait, I thought all these. Oh, I, oh, I thought you guys love us. No, we hate you because <laughs> this guy. They, that's it's so you know, clear. When, they, when he went uh, to uh, uh, do his fingerprints and all that, you know. And oh, that mugshot was the biggest favor they possibly could do for him. That My wife's saying I can't imagine being so a lot of uh, the, uh, African Americans and black people 
to him because, you know, that they're starting to realize more and more, in my opinion, that Democrats are holding them back. They're not doing any. Oh, yeah. They always have been. That's LBJ was a racist. I can't even say what he said, but he, you know, he, anyway. Yeah. I remember he, that. I remember what he said. Yeah, LB, yeah, the, the, yeah let's not talk about it. No, I'm not going to it. You know, I remember. I know. I don't think YouTube likes freedom of speech, but um, this yeah. Is, this is also. I'm sorry. Uh, no, go ahead. I'm, object, I'm but... just stammering because I'm nervous about ta having freedom of speech in America. Yeah. Uh, this yeah, is I'm... a subject, but is that booth that Kevin has, that's life science, isn't it? Yeah, yeah it's life science. Let me give him a full shot. It's incredible that it's life size. I just unplugged it. I just turned off the light. Oh, sorry. <laughs> you must have a low electric bill because uh, your camera is always jet black. It's like uh, it's like uh, you're living in a cave. But um, that's good. Uh, one thing I realized I last gassed up on March 1st, and I'm just now getting down to half a tank of gas. So that means I won't have to gas up again until the end of June. I don't know if that's good for a car to drive so little, but um, I guess I'm not only living in a 15-minute city like they want us all to be in, but I think I live in a seven-minute city. Um, Charlton, uh, what uh, state are you in? Maryland. Maryland? Maryland. Okay. Yep. yep. Well, the... Where's that the stuff was here? put in by Kennedy, really. He was just finishing it. But the what what LBJ added to that was uh, keeping was uh, was pretty bad. Okay, this is the new creature from the Black Lagoon comic, which uh, I was talking to Kevin about. I haven't seen the inside of it yet. Ooh. Ooh, okay. Um, nice. There was one cover I liked the most. Do you, do you have all the covers there at home? No, it, it shows them in the back, though. Yeah. Is that the one that you decided to keep for yourself, or is that just your reading copy? That's a damaged copy, yeah. Oh, I see. So you couldn't sell it. The one I liked is that one center. What do you guys think? You can look at them all. Is this out now, or is it out next week? Wednesday. Okay. So these are the covers you can choose from. Joel Jones. Oh, I like her. I met That's her several times. Oh, I don't know. That, now that I see it, that it really is a good painting. Maybe that's a good one too. I've never heard of her. Oh, she's great, man. I I met her several times, and uh, and uh, she was the uh, Catwoman. She's the Catwoman artist, or she was. Yeah, she. Did. Oh, really? Yeah, she did Supergirl. She did some other things too. Oh, wow. Uh, I like that cover, too. <laughs> I told him to hold the one for me that's at the top, right above that one, but now I'm kind of liking that one. Yeah, I like that. But, I don't, but then there's an Alex Ross one. Man. Yeah, that one's nice, too. The bad but part I, about that is the sketch. It's not his painting. It's just right. a sketch. Yeah. His, sketch, his sketches are real loose because he paints over them. Can you imagine that painted? That would be great. I bet you if you go on his website, I bet you there is a painted version. Wow. Well. That's a one in 75, though. I didn't get this one. You have to order 75. Oh. What about the other one, Joel Jones? That's one in 50, so I got one of these. Oh, oh okay. One in 50? I'll take it. <laughs> This black and white is one in twenty-five. This one's a one in ten. With look at look at the perspective on that. Like you should see, you should probably see a little bit of his eye, but you don't see it. Huh. Right? What? The inker messed up on this one. Oh. Do you see it? What? I've. Like, the, sure like, the, way the, oh. like the, ridge, the ridge comes down here, so you should see a little bit of his eye over here. Oh, okay. All right. But the inker missed that part. Oh, yeah. I see. Yeah. yeah. Or maybe, maybe he's winking at us. Maybe he's got that eye closed. <laughs> 
He was hey, like winking at us. Like, look at this girl. Nudge, nudge, wink, wink. <laughs> He's winking. But is that a rare one, the one that I chose that's under your fingers there? No. That's A and B, and the, I ordered actually more Bs than A's. Oh, all right. Hey, Grutu, I got to take off, man. Oh, sorry. All right. That's all right. Me. No, I, feel like I got to roll. Well, Good to see you, everybody. Yeah. Take care, take care. Take care I'll guys. Be on Saturday if you want to come on, if you're okay. not working. Yeah. All right, man. See you guys. Right. Take care. You too. You come on Saturday and watch me cake. <laughs> uh, back to Gotham. That Joel Jones covered us one in fifty. Does that mean it's like fifty bucks? Or are you going to be able to give it a discount or something? <laughs> I was going to keep this one actually. Oh. <laughs> well, you're not allowed to do that. Oh, you can do whatever he wants. You have a store. You're supposed to sell it. Well, I, I usually don't even order 50, but I did because I had two people that wanted this one. So that helped me pay for, for the 50 to get this one. This is just a racket, man. This is like the mafia yeah. going after you store owners. Yeah. You know what I would like is that Conan cover that's like the Archie, uh, with Betty and Veronica. I think you got that one, Hans, didn't you? Yeah, I got a. I, I got the. How much did you have to pay for that? Uh, I think it was uh twenty five, twenty or twenty five when I got it. Now it's a lot more. What do you think of this um this new gold key comic called um I don't know some kind of ghost dog by Jay Stevens? Have you, you seen know, that? I'll no, I haven't seen there. I kind of gave up on Gold Key after those hor the horrible art in those. Uh, yeah, art, but it's, a, art it's art. but they have a new comic that's done like a Harvey comic, and it's not. It's the same artist that did that Dwellings comic, but he's oh, not yeah, doing it. The Dwellings, Jay Stevens, but he's not doing it in, in an adult way. He's doing it more. It's like this kid whose dog dies, and it turns the kid into a bad kid because he's upset that his dog died and his dog becomes like a Casper like ghost that's trying to nudge him into not being an asshole. And it looks really good. It looks like something right from the early sixties. Uh, in fact, I, I uh, sent him a message on Instagram, Jay Stevens to see if he wanted to come on the show, but he, it doesn't look like there's a lot of words in this comic, but uh, <laughs> easy to read. But, uh, Jay Stevens hasn't gotten back to, I, I could tell he hasn't even seen my message, so he's probably really busy. He's also doing EC, work for the new EC comics. I'll have to check that out. Yeah, look up Jay been. Stevens on Instagram, and you can see, well, maybe I could just show you, because I've got my phone free here. Hold on. I'm going to probably have to look for that Joel Jones cover now. <laughs> Unbelievable. Yeah, doesn't it suck? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, you know, I mean, I don't want to. Hey, Hans, I sent you the link to the um, Monsterizer. They're still available. Oh, they are. Okay. It's called Figgy Furthermore. Yeah, you're right. That's what it's called. Oh, Figgy. Yeah, I, I did yeah. hear. I did hear of that. Um, uh, let's see. Yeah, I mean it. It's it's kind of like we're buying it because we have to because it's the creature from the Black Lagoon. But the interior of the comic doesn't really look outstanding. I hate to say, but no, it's just a it's kind of an interesting story though. Makes you want to oh, read this. I'm, I'm sure if I read it, yeah, it just. I have some of her original artwork, Joel Jones, that she did for Helheim. That actually propelled her, gave her a name, Helheim, when she did that. I remember Helheim was a good seller. Yeah, yeah I sold a lot of copies of that. I'm gonna give myself the screen for just a second. Um, okay. Oh, they, they've even made little. I guess they're they made little packs like like tops packs but um trying to 
see, he's he's put he's disguised his new comic in with these uh, old books, and it blends right in. See, Figgy. Furthermore, it just it yeah, 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 yeah. I... It fits perfectly. That's you know, and and that's what I think is so great about this guy is uh, is he. Yeah, I'm gonna check that out for sure because I do love um, those early Silver Age books, kids' books. I love that, especially the Harvey stuff. Yeah, he draws with this style. I mean, it's just like adamant. Yeah. Um, There's a new fan graphic book brought to uh, if you go to my Instagram. Posted a picture of the back page. Okay. Um, let me go there. That's Super Toys. Is that that yeah. one? Yeah. Yeah, guys, if you want to subscribe to Kevin's Instagram, it's um uh, or or KJ Toys, also known as Super Toys. Okay, you look for it's KJ Toys Focus. And it's got this garbage pail kid. Okay, let's see what you got here. What am I looking for? That last post I did, that's a new comic that comes out Wednesday. Oh, that's a comic. I thought that was like some kind of parody from like a National Lampoon kind of thing. Trans Celestial Shortwave Radio. <laughs> that's a comic book cover? That's cool. Yeah. What is Bruce Lee at the top? Yeah, it's about uh, like talk. Uh, that's a machine that you can talk to the dead, I guess. That's uh, what Muhammad Ali, James Dean, Steve McQueen, Bruce Lee. It was like the top. That's cool. Is it a good artist? Is it? It's like a. It's almost like Ed Piscor art in the inside. Is it, is it gory? No, it's not gory. It's just you know, real cartoony, like you know, Mad Magazine cartoony. Yeah, I would like that. That sounds great. He's got this dead man doll. Look at that. <laughs> you imagine that? Oh, man. There's Steve McQueen's in it. Elvis is in it. I think this story's called something about Elvis. Are you going to have these? I tried one. I got well, I got one to try it out. Oh, are you talking about the dead man? No, I just well, thought that, about also, I'm, what I'm pointing at now are these little kids dressed in the Halloween costumes. Yeah, those should be coming in soon. Oh, cool. I got a hey, set order. This this was yeah. one of the books they showed last night. I don't remember if it was. Michael yeah, I saw or, that last night. <laughs> but it was in good condition. <laughs> this, you know, <laughs> uh, Kevin didn't rip the comic. He got the comic ripped right in that. So he, he painted it in a tongue, or it didn't paint it, but the, what did you do? Put it back behind it? And it just turned I the just comic a, book. Paper paper behind it. It. I remember when we found that comic, when it was, he was going through the, that was going through those boxes of comics, and we found that. <laughs> we saved that. We can use that. That was the first thought, is we can make that into a ventriloquist puppet. Yeah, it was ripped perfectly. Yeah. <laughs> you almost think the kid did that on purpose, possibly. I don't know. Um, Stanley J. Kirby says, Are you guys familiar with J. Stevens' Atomic City Tales? Um, Stanley J. Kirby knows about stuff that we don't know about. He, he sends me comics I've never heard of, uh, that, that, that are these rock and roll comics. What was the name of that artist that you sent me a bunch of stuff of? Stanley J. Kirby. Um, and what you live what an hour and a half away from me i think he just kind of visit me it's just somehow no, nothing ever panned out logistically. Oh, yeah. holy smoke <laughs> this mask you've got looks horrific <laughs> that almost looks like a, someone that was like some of these masks uh, Gore Vidal is saying that Joel Jones book is selling for 50 bucks online. The one that I want. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. It's not even supposed to be sold yet because it's not. not well, it's not, maybe it's pre order. But yeah. It could go down. It seems like a lot of money to pay for a comic because you love the cover so much, but I don't know. Yeah, I know. It's. Um, 
it's 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 messed up. They just need to have one cover. I I don't know how people are going to collect in the future, a few decades down. How how are they going to know? I don't. Know. I like, think the, inter the 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 industry is like in a downfall. I mean, that's they could have sold like, more copies if they had that as the A cover. Or the closing everywhere. I mean, you know, there's a lot of well, it's like in the old days, there was one Tales of Suspense number, I don't know, 72. But right. now imagine if there were six covers of Tales of Suspense 72 from the 1960s. And here you are 50 years later. And it's like, how? I, I don't know. It's all I about think, money. You know, it's all the money. They, they, yeah, but it's. Yeah. They're not making enough money. They're pulling money back. They're not giving any more incentives for the retailers. That, you know, I mean, talk to Kevin. He probably can tell you that they're not get, hardly getting any incentives. They just How closed a bunch of stores in uh, California. What in December? Goth uh, Jeffrey's Comics closed. And I've been buying from him. You know, I know that. Talked to that guy many times on the phone. He's been. In There's the, one in the, Illinois. Uh, There's a shop in Illinois here. that just closed too. Which one? There's one in Illinois that just closed. Ah, uh, there's a few of them that have been closing. You know, Variety closed, and then there's another in the suburbs. A couple of them closed. How and is that? Earth two, they closed in uh, Sherwood Oaks, California. They they've been around a very long time, thirty years, twenty, thirty years. There's well, a there's shop here. It's probably the best shop that's left, and it's it's open by appointment only. So you can ah. only go in if you call ahead of time. And like know them or something, and and then mm -hmm. then they, they meet you at the shop and unlock the door and let you in. Otherwise, the door is locked the whole time. Yes. Man, that's really gotten bad. It's such a shame, wow. man. I mean, I. Well, there's just nothing interesting coming out. Well, I mean, the monster comic is interesting, and I get excited about these facsimiles, but that's nothing new. That's just reprinting something old. Uh, um, although the revival of Castle of Frankenstein was cool. I, what else is good today? I don't know. Um, the um, What is this uh, revival of Penthouse Comics? Is that any good? All they are is reprints. They're reprints of the '90s stuff. You're, you're really all they changed was the uh, all they changed was the the X Comex to a comp to a C. <laughs> oh. And they have there's new covers. They're just new covers. And they wonder why the industry is dying. You know. I mean, Does that actual magazine still get published? I I don't think that or Hefner's magazine are published anymore. Are they? Playboy, they're probably just know. online things, maybe. I think they're gone for a while. Playboy's been gone for a while, isn't it? Wow. I don't think it's around anymore. I think so. Not in today's climate. <laughs> Most of the places yeah. that used to sell magazines in my neighborhood don't have them at all. So the only place where I see magazines is at the grocery store and at like Walgreens, but all the liquor stores, corner stores, like delis that used to just have even just like 10 years ago, they would have surfing magazines, cannabis magazines, magazines with pit bulls on steroids on the covers. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Porno magazines with, wrapped inside of plastic. You know, the ones I'm talking about, these, they're all gone now. They're, none of those, they don't even, they're not, the magazines are gone. So I think a lot of them still exist, but you, like if you go to Barnes and Noble, they still have big racks of comic, um, not comics, but magazines. And right. I think that's where you go. but I think they must print them in very small quantities, just maybe only for Barnes and Noble or I don't know exactly just to sell coffee, maybe. Um, but I, it doesn't make sense. Like that's where all those those uh, warrant magazines, the Shutter, Vampirus Carmilla, they they're at Barnes and Noble, but there's no Barnes and Noble near me. So, but that's what I think is going on. Um, I don't know. But most of the magazines I see in the supermarkets, they're like more like books. They're one shots that are square bound that cost fifteen dollars. Mm -hmm. There's um 
like a couple. Uh, Sorry, guys. Jesus H. Christ. There's it's a couple. Happen. Of it's got to have at least one show. The tugboat coming in. <laughs> the like giant on that. What's her name? Caitlin Clark, the basketball player. Yes. There's. They've got several on her. She's real big. At least around here, she is. What are we looking at here? Let me give you a full screen. This is Cinefix magazine. Someone oh. must have been heard. I didn't know that magazine was still published. It's not. It's not. Do you remember Cinefantastic? That was a really well done magazine. Yeah, I remember that magazine. Cinefix was really good. Well, that dog is getting mad at somebody. Is that your dog, Kevin? No, that there's two of them. That's Drew. That's Drew Silla. That's uh Kevin. No, there's there's downstairs. Oh, that's not that's not your dog? No, that's Kevin's dogs. Oh two of them. they're mad at each other oh. right now. <laughs> yes, Lord. they are. They're arguing. <laughs> I think I kept this one because it had Twilight Zone, the movie, and it had, uh, and it had, uh, I guess that's all it had that I liked. Yeah. Was Dan the Lord of the Rings in it. There's Dan Aykroyd when he was getting the makeup put on. Oh, Time Travel Comics just sent me a uh, sent me a text here. What's her name? Wasn't she in a band? I don't remember. You know, I have just kind of fuzzy memories of Twilight Zone, the movie. I don't remember. Is that must be from the the um. 1980s. Yeah, no, I know when it's from. That must be from the story with the kid. You know, the forget the name of that story. It's it's a good life. Is that what it's called? Yeah, yeah. It must have erased her mouth. That was the gremlin on the wall. Yeah, I mean, it's none of them were as good as the originals in the 60s TV show. Although that's some pretty sure. good effects there. And uh, <laughs> you got you got to see what time travel comics just sent me. This this is hilarious, man. Well, what is it? <laughs> it just sent me this on the phone. Oh, you want to show it? Yeah, well, wait, look, I'm gonna give him the shot for a second. It it, it, it says ninety one hundred percent of men miss the Oreo cookie. The Oreo cookie. Yeah. Okay. Let me see if I can put it in. Well, there's. there's I don't see the Oreo. I don't either. You don't see the Oreo? Wait a minute. No. I didn't no. see it. <laughs> what the hell? If you look close, there is an Oreo. Wait a minute. Damn it. Here's the Oreo cookie, right? God darn it. Is it, is it the head of the other person? Yeah, you can see it right there. Would oh, I see it now. There's oh. the <laughs> that yeah, the yeah, I. That's the first thing I saw. Was that butt? I don't know. That's the first thing I was looking. Like the high drop, yeah, so. it just looks like the like back the of drop. someone's head. Uh, but uh, yeah, I think that's kind of funny. <laughs> anyway, I'm I'm gonna probably take off and. I got all my stuff here. I got to take with me tomorrow to the lawyer. Drop this off at the uh, my attorney. All right. And uh, so, in about a year, you think this? I mean, have you found any places that that look appealing? Well, like, I kind of, you know, I'm, I kind of like Iowa. You know, I like Iowa. I, 
I still like Centerville, but she doesn't. She wants to be closer to, uh, I guess, toward the Wisconsin border because the the family has a property out there that I call the compound. You know. Okay. Well, that makes sense. Um, they're going to be selling that place too in seven years or so. That that place is going to be gone, and I don't. Know. Well, could you buy it? I don't want to buy that, but it needs it needs some work, but. Uh, oh. No, I I gotta I wouldn't want to retire there. The place I moved to, I gotta look that I'm gonna be retiring there, and I'm not gonna move ever again. I'll probably die there wherever I move to from here. So I gotta choose it really carefully. But uh, maybe west of Dubuque, I don't know. So you you were thinking of Florida for a little bit. Yeah, I was, but then, you know, that's, even though they got a great governor there and everything, but then they got uh, strong, you know, uh, support of law enforcement. There's a lot of other problems there, too. You know, my wife's got allergies. There's insects everywhere. There might, my, I was talking to my daughter. She just told me that a lady was bit by a common garden snake, and then a week later, she died. She had some kind of an allergic reaction. After you got she hurricanes. Got, after she got bit, yeah, there's hurricanes and there's alligators. Well, the hurricanes are a big issue, yes. <laughs> but and my wife, my wife, when she attacked this old lady that was walking her dog, went after the dog first, and then she, the lady pulled the dog out of the way. And this was in a private, uh, uh, gated community. They had a pond there, and there was an alligator in it. There's video and footage. She of pulled that the well. dog away. And the alligator says, well, I'm going to go after you. And then attacked her and pulled her into the water and killed her. Yeah. Yeah, There was. there's video footage of that. Oh, yeah? Yes. Holy crap. Well, my wife had that? No, allergy problems in Florida, as I think what she was telling me. She she was able to breathe a lot better in Florida. I guess everyone's an individual, though. Yeah, then the humidity. I can't stand the humidity. It's, I was weighing a lot of the different, you know, pluses and minuses. You know, you're gonna get a lot of alligators. In the here. A lot of these alligators are just a product of their environment, you guys. Oh sure. Yeah. And then, and I they love those have fathers. Is the problem. Those huge cockroaches? What they got? I love those. Those flying cockroaches, man. When I was down there back in nineteen uh, uh, or two thousand and Five, I think, or no, uh, 2003, we went to a restaurant, and they were all up on the side of this wall of the restaurant, man, these huge, I mean, they were big, man, two, three inches, Yeah. and they were, flew onto the wall, and they were stuck onto the wall, you know, and she was, Colette was freaking out, you know, and I, I loved it, <laughs> but anyway, I, 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 I kind of like the Midwest, I want to stay in the Midwest, and I'm, Pretty sure I'm going to be moving to Iowa. It's just a matter of determining, you know, a, a place. Well, she, she does like do west work. of Dubuque, you know. She likes she likes that area west of Dubuque. I like Dubuque, you know. I think you could if you oh, sell a couple of properties in Chicago. You could probably get a big giant place. I think I just that. need. Three or four thousand, maybe four thousand square feet. That's would be three or four would be plenty for me. Are you sure? <laughs> yeah, because I'm not gonna I'm gonna sell a lot of stuff off. Not everything, but I am gonna be selling some stuff. I can't keep everything. But um, yeah. That basement's gonna expand when you when you get it out of there. <laughs> What? You have it packed. You have it packed in like Tetris, you know. But when you yeah. take it out of there, it gets like ten times as big, like that basement. Know. I don't even know half the stuff. I, I I'm coming that across. That basement will expand ten times what what you think it is. Yeah. Or is it'll look bigger? Is that what you mean? Or literally expand? Oh, well, literally. It, it literally because you've been in there so long, compacting everything, that when you take it out, it expands. That, yeah, that's a uh, psychological <laughs> effect. Are you sure? You, <laughs> I'm not sure I understand, but... No, when everything's out of there, it's going to look so big. That's what he's talking yeah, about. Yeah, when you take it out of there, it's going to become bigger. 
You, you haven't been talking to Neil Adams, have you? While when he was still alive, did you? Isaac Asimov. Talk, Sounds like Isaac his, Asimov. Uh, Neil Adams always talked about the uh, Earth is expanding and you know, it's getting bigger, you know. And, but uh, um, I, I knew, you know, I argued with him one time because he came to Chicago a lot, you know, during the, uh, the conventions. You know, he would go to the different stores. He's he's talking about this, you know, Earth expanding, and I said, "You mean the tectonic plates?" Expand? No, I mean the whole Earth is getting larger and larger, and there's. You know we're we're going to have a a huge problem if you know this continues and he's he had this theory that it was just you know getting bigger and bigger and he really believed it. Yeah. It's called the fat Earth theory. Is that what right. he called it? A lot of fat yeah, instead, of a, instead of a flat Earther, he's a fat Earther. It's just going to expand <laughs> and expand. I never heard of that until I talked to him. I just By the made way, up. It's, it's, I just Hans. Made it. Stanley J. Kirby is in Iowa. He says Dubuque is pretty nice. Oh, yeah. So I assume that I assume that means he lives near there, possibly. I know he lives somewhere around here. I'm I'm not quite sure because I don't remember. But uh, I know what well, he's And then the other thing is, you know, I gotta find people that you know, maybe my own closer to to me in age. You know, I don't want to be in a place where everybody's like in their twenties and thirties and forties and I. Yeah, I'm the same thing. I'm gonna to move to a little place with some older people in it. Same type of thing, Hans. Yeah, yeah. I'm thinking the same thing. Ready to are you, retire? Are you, are you gonna get out of California? No, no. I'm thinking about going from San Francisco to Grass Valley. That's what I'm thinking about right now. I really like Grass Valley. I just spent a week there. My son's really settled there, and it's and I'm ready to get out of the city. Things I've been here a long time through a lot. Things aren't getting any better. No, yeah, I, I know that, man. And the only thing that keeps me here is the beach, and I don't even go surfing anymore. So it's not like I'm a daily surfer anymore. And so what, you know, why yeah. I'm almost sixty, so it's time to to wrap it up and retire and move up to the mountains. Oh, well, you're you're sixty. You're you're one year older than me, huh? I'll be sixty in October. Oh. Oh, okay, so you're like half a year older than me. Yeah, we would have been in the same class. I graduated in '83. Okay. Oh yeah, you're okay. Yeah, I, I'm turning 59 on Saturday. At 4:20 in the morning on 4:20, I was born. Oh, that wow. I 4:20. Yeah, 20. yeah I, I found that on my birth certificate. It was. I thought maybe that's a misprint, but no, that's apparently what happened. That's strange. Yeah, I was born at midnight, 11:59. Oh, neat. Well, but, uh, you know, if, if there's anybody that lives in Iowa that know, I mean, besides you, that knows uh, any smaller towns, you know, that have a, a an older, that have a decent older population. Look, like, up, uh, look older. up a town called Sabula. Sabula? Sabula, S U B. Sabula. Yeah, look I mean, up that. I, I, I think there's older people in all the towns that just oh, they yeah, might be into hunting and farming. Yeah, <laughs> they're, there's some they that may not be uh, into pre code horror. <laughs> there's some like you know, Clear Lake. I said they were like 23, uh, 23 percent were over 60. You know, and that's that's kind of what I'm looking at. People are around 60 years old and Oler and stuff like that. So Clear Lake was pretty good. And then there was other towns that we looked at, that I looked at, and there was like only 17%, 9% over 60. Everything was like in the 20s, 30s, 40s. Isn't Palm oh. Beach supposed to be a lot of older people, Hans? Palm Beach? Palm Beach? Yeah, Palm Beach. Where's that? Florida, Florida. you're talking about? Yeah, I thought you were talking about Florida. No? no, I'm not going. No, I'm talking about Iowa, where I want to go. Oh, I thought it's you like, clear one. Clear, uh, there is a Clear Lake uh, in uh, Florida, but I'm talking about Clear Lake, uh, Iowa. Uh, that's where, uh, that's where Buddy Holly and uh, uh, the, the music died, you know. Clear Lake, Iowa, wasn't it? Oh, oh yes, yeah. Yeah, that surf ballroom is still there. It still looks exactly yeah. the same. I haven't been there, but I've seen videos of it. Yeah, that that that's up north, so that that's gonna be pretty cold. But yeah. but you know, it's cold anywhere, you know. 
Yeah, we're looking. I'm just. I mean, looking. you're used to Chicago. You're not. It's not like you're gonna be in shock. Um, no, yeah, I bet that's really nice up there, actually. Um, it brought you what's your population? You talking to me? Uh, brought you what? The, what's the population in your town? Less than two thousand. <laughs> this this one I was telling you about. That's uh, five hundred sixty-seven. Ooh, wow. that's pretty small. <laughs> yeah. That is kind of small. But it's cool, though. I'll show you a little a map. Pull See, up a the, map. The, the winters don't bother me. I kind of like the, the the winter. You know, I prefer that to the humidity, but yeah, I don't know. Family J. Kirby Surf Ballroom still has concerts. Are you near the surf ballroom, Stanley J. Kirby? Because I really want to see it. That's one place I want to go. And I would love to see someone like the five, six, seven, eights or the surfer jets there. And I need to also, I need, not all on, I need to go see the house on the hill. And that's in Wisconsin. That's oh, the place. I've been there a couple times. Yeah, I want to go up there. Um, that was great. The carrot okay, so, oh, that, that they have in there is just unbelievable. It's so great. maybe if we went, maybe Cleo and I could visit Stanley J. Kirby to see that um, surf ballroom. If there's a look at this, Gratu, did you know there's an island in Iowa? Island I think City. You were telling me about that on the phone. Well, let me make you bigger here, and I'll the see. Bula. Is this where you spent summers when oh, you were yeah. here? Yeah, I used to always spend my summer here. Oh, and they even got a welcome house. It looks like a mosquito, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it does. They do have mosquitoes there, a lot of them. <laughs> or a cave painting. Looks like a cave painting a little bit. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, Nick Cage had a house here, Nicholas Cage. Really? Oh, I thought you meant Nick Cave, <laughs> the musician. Yeah, Nicholas Cage, yeah. I think he had a house here, but I don't think he has it anymore. Yeah, well, he's a comic book guy. I mean, he named himself after Luke Cage. Did you, you guys all know that, right? Was mm, this the place that where he got his, didn't he get his collection stolen or something? He got it uh, back. I, I heard that he got rid of his collection yeah, he got it back. The one, the action number one was stolen from him and some other stuff, but he got that back. And then you're right, he did sell it. I think he sold everything. Yeah. There's the Mississippi right there. Hmm. So, are there, are there Washington homes here? This could be a neat place if there's like houses with, with, uh, yeah, there's docks house, there's house, there's houseboats, there's docks, there's like beaches. But does that land ever flood? I would imagine it might. Yeah, when the Mississippi gets uh, rises. Yeah, that's kind of uh, a problem when you have how many thousand comics? To Mike, I'm not Mike uh, uh, Hans. Don't yeah, you know, like sixty thousand comics. I, mean, I was just looking at. Oh, I was just looking at all hey, that water. This, uh, this island might actually sink if he puts all his comics on here. <laughs> <laughs> Remember that congressman or senator that was talking yeah. about Guam? Might you know if we put a lot of soldiers on that island, it might capsize. Yeah, <laughs> yeah if we put all kinds of comics on here, it might tip over. How about that idiot Democrat <laughs> that uh, said the the moon was made out of gas? <laughs> it's made out of cheese. We all know it's made out of cheese. Yeah, <laughs> it's made out of gas. She's telling all. Yeah. The yeah, then the Meyer was saying something. About, it's like, yeah, the moon's made out of gas, like people in the chat here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so funny to see people trolling in those chats. Oh, look at that, man. I think it's lovely. It just when you collect stuff made out of paper. Yeah, oh, I, yeah. it's the first thing I thought to myself. <laughs> scared the dog. <laughs> It scares the dog thinking about I'll be it. surrounded by water. <laughs> I don't know if that's any good. There was a, you know what? There's a town we were looking at, Hans, 
Oh man, I think it was in West Virginia. Oh, Beautiful. Cleo would remember where it was. It had a toy museum. Um, it had. Uh, it was just uh, it was on a river, and I was afraid of the flooding. But I think that the house we were looking at was out of reach of that. Oh, she would remember where it was. Uh, but I don't know. Actually, she's probably yeah. I don't know if she's on a break or not. Um. Look into places like Virginia and West Virginia and Kentucky and Alabama. There was a movie theater for sale, and that was a fun idea for a little bit that we could run a movie theater. And there was a building next to it we could live in, but then it turned out that building would have taken a lot of work. Um, yeah, I remember that. I remember you talking. About I mean, there's oh, tr oh, she's watching. It was called Wheeling. Wheeling and it was at West Virginia. Yeah, I told you my shift got cut. Oh, she's off work. <laughs> um, reminds me of young Frankenstein whenever you say Frog Luker. The she's the working horse. from home, isn't she? Yeah, but she, oh. apparently they they uh shut it down early tonight. Um, yeah. did they carve that right out of the uh dead tree? Yeah. Oh, that's pretty neat. That is neat. You know what you got to do is you got to you you uh, play around with Zillow or one of those apps yeah. on the phone like Trulia, and you yeah. just type in different places. And then once you find them, then you look at area vibes and try to find a place that has as close to zero crime as possible. And that's what uh, I've been doing. Yeah. It's, yeah. You. you uh, yeah. But I, I, I want to stay in the Midwest, though. That's the problem, you know. Oh, well, I, I kind of found the, the South kind of charming, though, too, the thought of the South. Because, uh, <laughs> you know, if you could live in a house that looks like the, the, like a plantation house, I mean, why, why not? <laughs> you know, uh, well, then you got to, you know, if, we get older, we're gonna live there for the rest of our lives, and get worry about stairs and stuff. Unless, oh, unless uh, we get an elevator like you do. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, unless the elevator gets stuck between floors. Um, I don't know if this is in your price range, but will it even come up? This is um, look at this place for three hundred thirty-eight thousand. <laughs> wow, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, you know, uh, <laughs> yeah, that, that looks good, but you know, she's kind of insisting on a ranch, a, a big ranch house, you know, maybe double. Uh -oh, yeah. Well, I, I don't know, you might be able to convince her something that looks this charming, you know, uh, and, and it, you know, what I remember yeah. about. This house, look at the doorknob there. Not this house, but this town is it has a toy museum. And I thought maybe I could get a job working there. <laughs> you could just open your house up to a toy museum. Yeah. But I, I, I just can't. That, that one All Star 58, I think I know what happened to that. And, and I think there was someone in our house back in Texas that. Hey, I had a dream you found. I had a dream you found it. Well, I did. Did you see the last stream I did the other day? Jambo sent me a copy. It was oh, amazing. yeah. Did you maybe see that's that? What it was. Maybe I was. My, my wife was saying I came across as a real asshole on that stream that I was like making fun of the condition, and I wasn't. It's like Jambo said, this one's pretty beat up, but maybe it'll do until you get a, another copy. And I was kind of laughing at just the kid that did that to that comic. And I just said, mine was so perfect. And it's like, it's like you sounded in ungrateful. No, I said, that wasn't how I meant. It's just my sense of humor. I, I'm not, I'm never really intentionally trying to hurt people's feelings. But, you know, I, I, I kind of thought that too, actually. Was. I, I was coming across like an asshole on that? No, not like an asshole. I mean, but that you were, I don't know, the kind of oh. making, making fun of it. Yeah, it's kind of, it is kind of a bad, a bad shape. <laughs> When you said that, I... That's not what I meant. Damn, I'm such a jerk. Um, 
<laughs> but no, I well, wasn't. No, I, the yeah, stuff he, he sent me was unbelievable. I mean, yeah, I know, I know. But it was, it, you know, it's, it, the, the, people look get at this 149,000. Well, it's only 2,000 square feet, but uh, oh, that's not enough, though. Why does it do this stupid crap? What? Oh, maybe it's just a, uh, it could be just a condominium or something. Oh hell! <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But why? What is going on with this black thing that pops up? Oh man, they're wanting. Oh, they're wanting me to look at this. Um, <laughs> it's a door knocker. Yeah. That's cool. I like that. I'll buy it just for that. Look at these stairs. Man, that's nice. See the. This is I love, I love places like that. I. I Man. I mean, yes, there are stairs, but they're really cool stairs. It looks like the whole house is stairs. That's all they show. But yeah, you, you could probably put a lot of monster posters around that fireplace. <laughs> it's a little too dignified for me here, but uh, oh man, I really was coming across Jambo. I wasn't meaning that. No, I mean, that's a perfect. It's a perfectly readable copy. It's just I was that one that somebody stole from me was in mint condition. So I don't know. I look a radiator. How exciting! <laughs> yeah, people just paint everything all white. I think you're gonna find it. I think you're gonna find it now that you have another one. You're gonna find it. Uh, everyone says that, but I've been through every every box. I I I think there was a guy that must have snuck up to my comic room, and it's just so perfect that it would have been in the very first box because. Um, oh, let's see what my wife says. It was definitely Wheeling, West Virginia. And wow, I found a massive structure, LOL. Yeah, um, yeah, there was a, it was like a four story building. It was really, it, it was beyond words. Um, but I'm going to tap out you guys. I'm going to call it a night. It was really, yeah, good. That's oh, good. I probably should go soon because, because she's, I thought she was going to work till 11 and she's already off. I might as well go up and hang out with her. Um, all right, I'm gonna take off. Guys, too. All right, take care. Um, guys, if you want to come back Saturday, I'm gonna be doing some kind of self indulgent birthday. The 20th? Thing. Saturday no. is the 20th, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, I'll be I'll be there. What, uh, right. is, what time right, are you uh, planning on that? You gonna... and I'm supposed to get some packages from Kevin that came from Charlton and. I'm not supposed to know about these things. Uh, what time are you? What time is that going to be? In the afternoon or in the evening, or when you think you're going to start? Um, I probably. I, I don't want to go on during comic book memories. Maybe whenever they end at eleven or whatever. Maybe I don't know. I. Oh whatever. I, I'll check I, in with whenever you. Whenever I feel like starting it, I. Yeah. The time that it says it's going to start is probably never accurate because I'll just go on if I. Well, I'll there's also a Trump in. rally I'll be watching at the same time. So. Well, we'll be checking in then. But I, I'm, right. I'm supposed to get two different boxes from Gotham City because Charlton and someone else paid for some of the stuff in my whole pile, and I don't really know. It's supposed to be a secret, so I, let me pretend I don't know. I don't really know who it oh, was. I didn't ask you to tell me that. You didn't have no, to. No, what I want to, what I'm going to say is I'm going to have an unboxing, and but oh, I don't know what I'm getting. Yeah, I'd like to see so, that. Yeah, yeah. So, All okay. right. Well, All right. So long. We'll see you there. Take care. All right. Take care. So, Dr. I will see you. Uh, I'll see you Saturday, Gratu. Yeah. Take care. All right, my friend. All right, you guys. Take care. Is it going to be like Hollywood? So are you going to have more of uh, a bunch of people? Well, I'd like to, but um, I'm just wondering yeah. how many people. How many people did you have tonight? Six. Well, there were. I had to have. I had to take people off to add people. So I think maybe we had more than six. But um, if I get the upgrade by Saturday which would mean if the check came in the mail tomorrow or uh, tomorrow, then I could upgrade by Saturday and, and then I could have nine, I think. Um, Goes from six to nine. 
Maybe. Yeah, I could get three more people at a time. It is very rarely that I'm going to need to have more than that, nine people. Um, there was um, people I was hoping to have on today that maybe they can come on Saturday, like um, the Dark Ride Dracula couple. And um, I would love to have our friends from Dallas, the, um, Nick and Sydney, the clowns, to come on if they can. And mm -hmm. uh, um, and maybe Stanley J. Kirby can come on. That would be neat. Um, or maybe Rochester Teen Set out insider outsider i can't remember if it's insider outsider um my wife says we will just do the upgrade tomorrow or saturday even if we're expecting a check from george soros but maybe she's saying we could do it and then reimburse the money when we get it from the world economic forum um i thought they were coming on tonight yes but they have we're having trouble with their wi-fi or something um it's outsider, right? <laughs> I'm not good. My memory's not good. So I really was coming across as an asshole yesterday. My wife's very perceptive. I was not meaning to. It's just my sense of humor. <laughs> Leave it to me to get a present. It's like, yeah, look at how shitty it looks. <laughs> it didn't. It really was a perfectly okay reading copy. And it's a comic I cherish. And, and the other stuff he sent me was so amazing, too. I was... <laughs> You know, I don't think Jambo was offended, but <laughs> that's how it always goes. I, I get people pissed off and angry, and I think I'm being funny, but <laughs> it never works because my sense of humor makes no sense to anyone but me, I guess. Um, just read too many mad magazines and too much National Lampoon, and probably that's the National Lampoon more than anything. Because they hated everything and everybody. Um, so, um, are sales okay at the store? No. No, sales are not okay, but it doesn't matter. What? Why doesn't it matter? <laughs> I'm, I don't need to. I mean, you're doing okay. Your store is going to survive, yeah. right? Yeah, I can't. The way I have it set up, I can't fail even if I wanted to. Uh, so, is there a secret to that? <laughs> I mean, you, you, you've yeah. got regulars that keep you going. Is that it? Well, I was, I was smart. I'm smart that the years that I do make money. Oh, you invest. I don't spend my I don't spend the money on stuff except for um, monster masks and garbage pail kids and original art. I don't, even buy, I don't even buy garbage pail kids anymore. I already have all the garbage pail kids. You so have I, all I, of them. <laughs> but why would no. I buy this? I don't like buying the new ones. The new ones don't do anything for me. And you were telling me this morning that. To get ten packs of the new wacky packages cost a hundred dollars, meaning they're ten dollars a pack. And I was telling you, I swear yeah. they were five cents when I was in third grade a pack. <laughs> and I said maybe yeah. it was fifteen cents, but no, it couldn't have been because comics were twenty cents. And I was buying stacks and stacks. Well, a couple of times I bought the whole box in the stop and go. I just brought it up, Mister. I want to. Can I have the box yeah. if I buy all these? You know. Although there, were 25 cents. there were 25 cents when I was a kid and we could get $5 for a can. So I'd take five cans from my parents. They'd have a party the night before and I'd go around collecting all our cans. This is back in Iowa. Uh -huh. And I'd take, I'd take the wet. We take a wagon full of cans to the little corner store and we trade them in and get garbage pail kids. Um, but you like, could trade in five. You could trade in five cans and get one pack of garbage pail kids. It's just I was just a few years earlier in the wacky packages, and garbage pail kids uh -huh. was like the next thing after that. 
10 years or so later. Yeah, about, I think, about uh, 10 years later. But I think it's like, I think wacky packages were 70, 1973 and that you're the right. They were five cents. Yeah. But what were, were aluminum cans? How much were aluminum cans selling? Could you sell your cans back for in 73? I don't know, Mike. Um, or was when was aluminum when was aluminum a big thing? I don't know. You know, my mom never really let me drink soft drinks, uh, which which here apparently soft drinks is a completely alien word. Because I was talking with some people today, they said they said um, everyone says pop here, and I said, "Well, I know soda pop," and they thought soda pop that sounds weird. <laughs> And I said, we well, they said, how do you say it back in Texas? I said, everyone calls them soft drinks. And they said, what? <laughs> it's Here we call them soda. Here we call huh? them soda. Here we call them soda. I think in the Midwest, they call it pop. Yeah. I swear here, that in Texas, here we just call it soda. Drink. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, besides the point, my mother wouldn't let me drink Coke and all. Maybe that's why I'm addicted to it now. I, I just, she... I mean, occasionally I would get, you know, a special privilege of a Coke, but yeah, she never wanted me to drink that stuff. Um, well, we didn't drink, uh, we didn't drink sodas, but our parents, they would drink beers all day long and all night long. <laughs> yeah, but I, I, I know I never collected cans to buy things. I would steal quarters from my older brother's uh, quarter jar sometimes, I hate to admit but you know, they're, they, it's probably written in <laughs> St. Peter's book, so I might as well be honest about it. Meyer says I was going to shoot a video of them, but forgot. Um, okay. Yeah, yeah, that's right. We were. But yeah, they've gotten so expensive that I would, I could, uh, for the same price of buying those cards, I could buy a piece of original art. Yeah. For the same price I'd spend on all those cards to build a set, I can just buy a piece of original art. Yeah. The Coca-Cola Bottling Company put together special teacher materials for them to give to their students back when I was a kid in Texas. And it was uh, an article and then questions that they could answer, the students could answer about the article. And basically they were trying to teach the kids that you shouldn't call all drinks Coke because that's a brand name. And yeah. uh, if you call them all that, eventually the Coca-Cola company would lose the, it would no longer be an exclusive term. It would become just the generic word used for all soft drinks. And that would really hurt the Coca-Cola company and all their families of the bottlers and everyone that works for it. So they were telling you don't call, you know, Dr. Pepper Coke. Or don't call Sprite a Coke. It's it's yeah. and that was Same they, they, were, they were actually trying to to get into the schools to teach these kids in Texas. Don't call it that anymore. Uh, Same thing with uh, Kleenex. You call everybody calls it Kleenex when it's a tissue. Right. You or, know another uh, thing that's Q -tip. weird. Q tip. Q tip is one. Yeah. What would you what would you call a Q tip that's not Q tip brand? Ooh. Um, I don't know. I I almost didn't even know that there was. I thought they had the brand corner. Um, here's a weird one. There there was a book I was reading with my students years ago, and they were the kid was putting a bunch of stuff in the dumpster when and the family was moving. They're putting the last stuff they didn't weren't taking on the move in the dumpster, and the word dumpster is capitalized. And I thought that's weird. The dumpster, and I, I told the class, I think this is a mistake. Why dumpster shouldn't be capitalized? Because uh, capital, you capitalize names, proper nouns, and and I looked it up, and and by golly, dumpster is a brand name of that. And I uh -huh. always just thought dumpster was like saying trash can, but no, dumpster is an actual product name, uh, so it's capitalized. Oh, she it's says a cotton swab. Yeah, of course. They're right. called cotton swabs. Um, Maybe somebody's last name was Dumpster. <laughs> I haven't had an RC in years. I may have to get one for Saturday night. 
uh, cotton tipped applicator, says Meyer. Um, I might have to get a Michelada. What, what's the thing about Saturday night? Or is, what's going on Saturday night? Oh, are you talking about the party I'm having? Uh, probably not. Um, figure out what I need to do here. Um, starting to turn the lights off here. Yeah, this office is starting to look okay. Oh, for my birthday, laugh out loud. Well, I, you know, she's not working Saturday. I thought she was working Saturday. So I don't really want to do a live stream if my wife isn't working unless she appears on it or at least is a voice in the background. So if, if she'll be part of it, then, I mean, if she isn't, the live stream is only going to last long enough for me to show um, whatever stuff I get in the mail. It's supposed to show up Saturday. It may not. Let's see what it's saying here. Um, if you can't come on, uh, if you can't go live Sunday, I'll try to just do a filmed show, maybe. Oh, Sunday. I should be able to do it Sunday morning. Yeah, I'm just talking about doing it Saturday. Um, I'm just trying to see the status of the packages coming from you. And because I knew that there was something coming from John Gorris, but I got that and I knew that. Oh, Fibes is the other. Fibes and Charlton have both told me that they got stuff from you. And <laughs> oh, was so I supposed to send that? <laughs> You're funny. But it's it 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 uh yeah because I have the track I have the tracking numbers so you're not kidding you're not fooling me but how did you get the tracking numbers? Somehow my wife has like with anything coming to the house she gets the tracking numbers. Man, I was trying to be I was trying to be sneaky about it. I know. Look, it says expected delivery by Saturday the twentieth, but it still shows it just left wow. Phoenix, Arizona. So all my careful timing. Yeah, well, you nothing. did time it, it to show up exactly on my birthday, so that's good. I was nervous so about the, it because it rained torrentially. I'm talking over you. I'm sorry. I'm just saying it's not a surprise now, though. No, it is because I don't know what they got because there's like five million things in my whole pile. I'm going to have to send it to your neighbor next time, maybe. I got a package today for someone named Raul Estrada or some some name, and it was to this address. And and I, I I there were three packages for me today. One was my cake that she ordered from someplace in New York, and one was one was um I, I well, one was just a bunch of toilet paper she ordered from Amazon. And the other one, they all came from UPS. And the other one had my address, and I didn't. I just opened it very neatly, and it's like uh, some kind of Playmobil thing for a five-year-old. And it's then I looked at the name, and it's like my address, but it says like uh, it has a Spanish name. And so I called UPS, and they said just seal it back up and put it out, and the UPS guy will pick it up tomorrow. Um. So I, so yeah. Oh, well, what is she saying here? Uh, we should try to get Randy on on Saturday. Yes, my friend Randy. I would love for him to come on. Um, she says she's like a spy. That's how she found out the post. The, the uh, are you going to have a cake? Uh, I think she ordered it from a cheesecake place, but I guess it's how actually. Do you, a cake. How do you send a cake in the mail? I don't know, but I, it came. <laughs> um, I mean, is it dripping out of the bottom of the box, or is it? Oh, I wonder, am I supposed to put it in the refrigerator? Well, <laughs> I got it on the floor in the living room. Um, she says, I think it's a Black Forest cheesecake. Um, that's an awesome birthday treat, says Ricky Swangles. Um um, junior cheesecake. Yeah, I don't. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, so uh, that's basically my birthday. Is so I'm gonna get whatever the cool stuff they sent and and the amazing stuff Jambo sent, which 
I need to show it again on Saturday, what Jambo gave me, and not sound like a tool this time. So I'm going to have a re-presentation of that. Yes, it's in the fridge. LOL, oh my, M effing G. Yes, okay, I'll go put it in the fridge. <laughs> it's gigantic. How is it going to fit in the fridge? I guess I take it out of the box first. I, what do I know? Hopefully it, has, uh, hopefully it has dry ice in there. Well, it was sitting on the front porch <laughs> all day, so let's just pretend that I worked late and I just got home, and now I'll go put it in the fridge. Yeah, the show Sunday morning, is it a toy show or a comic show? It's strictly FFS. comic. FFS. What does FFS mean? For, oh, for F's sake. Oh, I see. Um, ooh, she's really using foul language tonight. Um, it's strictly comic books on Sunday. Oh, okay. Yeah, that'll be neat. Um, There's supposed to be some surprise guests there, too. Oh, cool. I, I don't come across as a complete asshole, do I? <laughs> no, because I know you. Oh, okay. Maybe to, well, the, maybe to somebody just well, walking might, by. If, if, if you didn't know me, I would come across as an asshole. <laughs> I, that means I need, to, I need to get a little, I need to tweak things a little bit. No, I thought I, thought I dreamt that. I thought I dreamt that you found that book, but maybe I was listening to your show in my sleep. Um, Cause I didn't see I didn't see that show. What show was that? It was the one from the, uh, two days ago. Um, Cause I don't remember. Ago. I don't remember an unboxing. I must have been listening to that in my sleep. At the beginning of the show, I I did that, but I don't remember what else I did in the show. Or who I listened to a lot of stuff. Uh, I listen to a lot of stuff while I'm sleeping, and I dr have dreams about it. Yeah, that's weird. Have you ever been watching a movie on television? You fall asleep and your mind continues the movie, but in a yeah. completely different direction. So sometimes yeah, but I hear that better. voice, whatever that voice is, I hear it the whole night. Yeah. Sometimes that can be really bad when Cleo leaves on something about uh, some weird show about Nephilim or something. It's like, who knows what, what horrible things. Uh, Remember, do you remember like 10 or 15 years ago when YouTube was all alien stuff? Yeah. Yeah, I used to yeah. Uh, fall. I used to fall asleep to that and wake up with some weird stuff on. And then I couldn't tell if I was dreaming or if I watched that. Okay. She's saying only half the time. Ricky Swangles. I don't think you come across badly, Orloff. You're a nice man. <laughs> it's just like... He takes shots at some lames, and I'm like, OMG, shut up. They are already lames. <sighs> You're the one insulting people. LOL, says Ricky Swangle. Uh, I'm a lame myself. I'm just trying to be funny, man. I'm, I'm trying to create entertainment that, that I would like to watch, you know. Well, I guess I better go. Um, yeah. Yeah, it was nice hanging out with you. I wonder, you know, um, if we could do this every Thursday, and I think it would be fun. What are you doing? Okay. Thursday, I think, is the best time for me. Yeah, I mean, I don't, uh, I don't like that. I might be stepping on the geeky puppet show frog and monkey or whatever. It's a frog and a. It's a I frog mean, there's. And a, there's YouTube shows on uh, all the time. At least for me, there is. There's always something on. I know, but I kind of try to honor people when they stake a claim on a certain night. You know, like Wednesday is Micah's night and Friday is Horror Mike, but I couldn't do it on Friday even if, really if I wanted to because I'm married. And Saturday morning is somebody's spot. and Sunday morning is like... Uh, um what's just, well, people can watch the, you can watch the show at any time you want you know my mind is gone see i, I was see this is why i get people mad because I, I was about to call this person 
I was about to call this person Fraggle Rock because I can't remember his name. The, the guy well, from thought, I've been calling everybody. Uh, I've been calling the name a uh, uh, statue, Bob. I've been saying that a lot. Well, what is his name on Sunday that does the rainy comic book show? Um, I not can't. Statue Bob. You're not talking about Statue Bob. No, the, the guy, he's one of the four color fossils, and I can't remember his name. Oh, the Saturday morning show? No, the Sunday morning show. Oh, I didn't he's, know there was a Sunday. He's usually on live, and he's... No. I don't know about that. I don't know about that show. Someone's going to tell me his name. No, they're not. Um, I didn't know there was a show on Sunday morning. I don't think I... There's nothing really on on Sunday morning, huh? He, man, I, I can't think of his name. Um, it's uh, Howler Mouth. <laughs> I, don't, I was calling him Fraggle Rock. I don't that's know him. A good, that's a good comic book name, though, Fraggle Rock. <laughs> that is a good name. You could be Fraggle Rock Comics. <laughs> I, I, I can't remember these names. I'm getting too old, man. I'm about to be 59, man. See if you could remember everyone's name and you're 59, Kevin. Um, anyway, I'm going to be, I'm gonna be Statue Bob. I call people Fraggle Rock. Um, I want to be known as Statue Bob. Oh yeah, that's right. I called that that guy, the guy with the chains that's on with Comic Tom. I called him. What did I call him? Statue Bob. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's like Comic Tom, Statue Bob. It sounds like a good name. Um, the Tom and Bob Show. Watching you guys is a highlight. Most of the rest of the stuff I watch is about stressful stuff. This place is just pleasant. I'm grateful for that. I wonder. What is the rest of the stuff like the news? <laughs> That's stressful stuff. Um, yeah, I watch some intense stuff just about every day. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> that's because this is a pretty stressful world right now. Anyway, I guess I better run. This dog is stressing me out because she wants to eat everything in the room. So I'm going to get out of here and close the door. <sighs> man, Drew, please don't eat everything, man. Um, All right, I'll see you guys on the Saturday. All right, take care. I'll see you. She's going to eat okay. the Gutenberg Bible next here, man. Uh, let's see. The dog probably yeah. ate Power Girl. Maybe the dog ate Power Girl. <laughs> yeah, civilizational collapse and warfare. <laughs> LOL. Well, I'll see, you. I'll see you then, Kevin. Take care. All right. See you Saturday. All right. All right. Yeah, I guess I'm going to end this stream. Um, comic stuff is like a vacation. Yeah, I'm trying to make this channel a little more balanced and not just be only comic books because uh, man does not live by comic book alone. And so um, we, um, we are now uh, one is the loneliest number, ladies and gentlemen. Um, so um, right through. Ruth about to vomit. She's been eating things to make herself vomit. And um, so let's uh, see what's going on in the chat here is uh, one more time before we um, head on out. Let's see here. The hell? Drew, what are you doing? All right, we got to get out of here, man. It's sick and tired of this.